stuff that maybe a teenager would laugh at, you know, stuff, you know. I mean, like, there's a scene where he, like, the whole thing is Mario, he hates mushrooms, but he, in order to use power-ups, he has to eat the mushrooms, he hates it. So he's, he's like, ready to barf. <laughs> like, stuff like that. Like, yeah, the way I look at it is, if it's good, it's good. I mean, I yeah. remember when the Lego movie came out, and I, like, rolled my eyes and was just like, oh, my goodness. And then I eventually saw it later on video and was blown away. I was like, this movie is unbelievably good. It's so good. <laughs> I was So it doesn't matter if it's animated or if it's for kids or whatever. If you make something stellar, it's going to win me over. So with that, we are live. Welcome, everyone. It's... Uh, Monday night, we are doing the Monday night late. Or we just call it late night comics here, and uh, it's uh, me and uh, me and RDV. I kind of threw us in live without warning him. We were talking about uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie uh, backstage. He's seen it. I haven't had a chance to seen it. Have you seen it? And if so, what do you think? Did it meet your expectations? Was it? Did it surpass your expectations? Um, what I'll have you? Are you my... looking forward to seeing it if you haven't got a chance to see it yet? My brother, who's six years older than I am, um, really doesn't care to go watch a lot of like the like the superhero movies. Just he thinks it's like, kind of kid stuff. He doesn't really care for them. Went and saw this with his girlfriend, and he because mainly because he grew up playing the game, season you know, all you know Super Mario World stuff. He loved that stuff. He said he he loved it. He was just blown away by how just awesome it was. You know just. Like I said, the whole thing was Seth Rogen playing Donkey Kong. I kind of was hesitant at that. He said, like, he was like, yeah, it's pretty much Seth Rogen when he first started out before he became full blown liberal. You know, he was actually, oh. and, 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 he, and either that, and this is the point where he's like, they, they wouldn't let him ad lib at all. He was, yeah, they wrote the script and that's it. He wasn't allowed to change anything. He said, so it was actually like refreshing to see him in there and not cringe, you know? Look, I mean, but, Seth Rogen. Is Here's the thing, man. A lot of these Hollywood types, when you get to see them off script in their personal lives, we we find uh, they can often be pretty uh, cringy or tasteless or what have you. It does that doesn't deny that they're talented. I I have not appreciated anything Seth Rogen's had to say off, you know, like yeah. outside of his professional stuff. But he's made funny movies. The guy clearly. Got where he was because he had a measure of talent. And that's the case with most of Hollywood. So Seth Rogen came known as the dirty joke guy. Um, I liked him in Panama Express. I thought he was actually really good in that, you know. But like that like I said, he just became Seth Rogen in every movie. And I got the yeah, point I mean, he, and then he started phoning first. it in. Obviously he was a major yeah. pothead and you know, sometimes people start believing their own hype. And I think that's where Seth Rogen kind of fell into a problem. But I'm not the kind of person that I'm going to say, oh, uh, because Seth Rogen's an asshat, that he can't do things. Uh, no, I never, like, said he, never said he's a bad actor. No, I'm not I'm saying you saying. are. I'm just saying that I yeah. – there's sometimes there's people that are like that. They're like, oh, this guy's a oh, troll. Sure. You know, and I'm like, well, yeah, but that's a completely separate from his talent. It's like the Mark Wade thing, right? Dude is a complete yeah. ass clown outside of writing comics, but that doesn't deny the fact that he has a talent as a writer. <laughs> like both sure. can exist. <laughs> they can't differentiate between the two. It's like if someone's uh what they're doing in a movie versus how they are in real life, you know? Like he right. could like, you know, he'd be he could be like the, the biggest douchebag uh villain and whatever in every movies, and then offline he's a sweetheart and people like like, oh my gosh, it's Seth Rowan. He's a villain. You know, attack him. Like, I see, I see, you see these people, like, you know, who watch these, uh, uh, like wrestling. Remember how every, when you're younger, you thought it was real? And how oh, right. people just, yeah, you, know, you hate this person. You hate, he's such a horrible villain. He hate, you know, and then you find out, holy crap, this person's actually kind of nice. Um, <laughs> now, Seth Rogen is kind of the opposite. He, he's always played kind of like, you know, the, uh, he's kind of he's like the dirty humor version of Jason Bateman in his films. He's he's supposed to be the straight guy, uh, uh, and you know he always says somebody else plays the Muslim McCarthy or James Franco, who's supposed to be like you know the, the obnoxious one. He's supposed to be the reasonable person. 
But like I said, these people, because they do these interviews, they say this stupid shit. They uh, they call people uh, who don't agree with them politically, call them Nazis and all that stuff. It really puts a sour taste in, you, in your mouth. And it, you kind of like this, every time you hear that name, you, you kind of wince. And you're like, oh, he's involved in it. I don't want to see it. Oh, for sure. You know? and, and and I don't I don't begrudge anyone, you know, like if you think I don't want to see the movie because I can't stand Seth Rogen as a person, but, that's one thing. Like I'll, I, that's fair. But if you say I, Seth Rogen is bad as a person, and therefore he also can't act yeah. or do anything. Like, well, it's like no, that's not true. Like, you 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 can you can make your stance like you know me. Like I don't want to buy Mark Wade books because I I don't like him as a person. I I I don't want to support his work. But I won't deny that he's talented. Right. Like I'll, yeah. I'll be like, oh, yes, he can write books. And if I read a book and I didn't know it was Mark Wade, I'd read it and be like, yeah, this is good. Totally fine. Just, just, I'm just saying, just be honest. And I'm not, not talking to you, just out to the ether. You know, if you just say, I don't want to say, cause I just, that person gives me a bad taste in my mouth. And even though they are, I just, I'd rather not. Like, okay. Well, everyone, no. you know, you, everyone's got to do what they want to do. Like we, we, we watch movies. As a pure luxury, right? There, it's not toilet paper. We don't have to have it. <laughs> so this is, how, this is how... So I take the same argument, and I have this outlook on that, and when it comes to Uncle Man too, everybody hates her, and because she's crazy, and she did all this stuff to him, Johnny Depp, and I look at that, like, it's, it's like, I, I, I mean, obviously, she's a horrible person, but I'm not, I don't want to not see the movie because of, because of her. I mean, I still want to support the other people who are in this who had not, nothing to do with that. Right. Yeah. Oh, for so sure. people who are boycotting that movie are like, oh, we don't want it because they ever heard. I'm like, she's already yeah. in it. It's already been, it's done. If, well, if, and now, if, if, now, I'll just say this quickly. If she had done this before they started filming and they continued filming regardless after all the events of this, then maybe I wouldn't want to because they just ignored it. But to, sure. to try try to take her out of this when she's in, probably intrigued to, to the plot probably would just ruin everything. And like I said, it's just I don't know. It's just that's the way I feel. Sure. And if you get a bad taste in your mouth for whatever reason, it's going to take away from your enjoyment. And when you got to spend fifteen yeah. thirty bucks to see a movie at the theater, the last thing you want to do is have to have a bad taste in your mouth. So I totally get 40, it. Forty um, bucks. Uh, thirty. For two people or one? Well, it depends. It's about fifteen bucks for a ticket, and then, and holy crap! I went and saw a movie the other day, and a large popcorn is up to ten dollars. Ten dollars, um, <laughs> like, Marcus. We have that. Marcus, if you have that, you buy it for like a year, and you get like free popcorn. You this know, is twenty popcorn. twenty cents worth of popcorn. Why is it up yeah. to ten? I get inflation, but when you're starting product value is in the pennies it's, things it's don't need important. to go up by dollars <laughs> this, is, this is uh corn is imported from other countries and they, you know it's, it's like the cocoa beans the cocoa shells yeah <laughs> it's, 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 it's so, the finest kernels ever uh, so uh, well so anyways Zach, i don't say uh, about amber her well we're gonna get to yeah. zach here he can wait he's on vacation he's, he's in alabama i feel i i'm scared for him zach just sip your mai tai and sit back um, do they drink Mai Tais in Alabama? We'll get to that. So the uh, Amber Heard uh, thing is like, I think is hilarious when I see people getting all indignant and everything. Number one, we don't fully know what happened. It's a big, he said, she said story. I tend to suspect that Amber Heard is the bigger culprit of the situation, but regardless which one of us can look in the mirror and say that we live righteous lives? Like we haven't done screwed up things and 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 they're stupid. I don't believe. To me, I think it's a big difference to discover the skeletons in someone's closet and then judge them versus how someone specifically treats you. Like a lot of my indignant, and I'm just speaking for myself here. Like I had a bigger problem with Brie Larson even though Brie Larson arguably did a lot less than Amber Heard <laughs> when all said yeah. and done, but Brie Larson directed it at me. Like her contempt is with me. So my thing is like, Oh, you have contempt for me. Okay, good. Have fun. Go with your movie career. I have no desire to see anything you do. Brie, uh, with Amber Heard on the other hand, it's like, 
oh, you had a screwed up marriage. You're a little psychotic. Maybe Johnny Depp's a victim. I, that's terrible. I hate that. But pretty much everyone in Hollywood is that way. Like, am I just going to give up movies in general? Or is it just because I learned about this particular story, I'm going to feign disgust and act all self-righteous and be like, I can't see Aquaman. But it's like, well, meanwhile, Tom Hanks was found to fly to Epstein Island, right? But he's still America's darling. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, when we start looking <laughs> under the covers of a society of despicable people, you're going to find despicable things. So... I'm not telling people to ignore it. I think we'd probably all be better off if we just all abandoned Hollywood. It's unlikely. I'm just saying, so if you are going at least be somewhat consistent with, I don't know. People could do what you're going to want to do. Uh, I, I'm with you, though, on your side. I would rather the movie not be tarnished. Like when I heard like, oh, they're going to like cut a lot of Amber scenes. I'm like, well, those scenes are part of the movie. Yeah. Cutting those scenes are going to hurt the narrative of the story, which is going to hurt the movie, which is going to hurt the success, which means there's a lot of people that put their hard work in it. You know, people that aren't the stars, the people that are just like carpenters making sets and things like that and clothing, you know, yeah, those, sewists. Those, like, those, those so many so so people are going to be the ones like, well, you can just recast her. I'm like, well, recasting her will just do the same amount of damage as just leaving her in. Wouldn't you agree? Because I, I yeah. honestly... Taking her out and having somebody that's random put in there as like you know casting her and like oh she's not like what it's it's a <laughs> it's it's like did I go right th am I watching the right movie did I just get the wrong copy <laughs> it's yeah and like I said her character was in it was basically like super important in the first film taking her out of the second one like and, and be like oh it's like yeah I left her at home with a baby now I'm gonna go fight war yeah <laughs> it's a, and it's just it's and it's just it's just, it's, a, yeah. uh, it's an, it's so, how do I say this? Like, it's so um, ludicrous to me where like they're pushing full steam ahead with Flash and they're going to, they're saying like, he's going to survive yeah. the James Gunn cuts and like, they're going to keep him in the new. And I'm like, this is the guy that literally assaulted that woman in Iceland, like ran off with those kids. Like he's done all sorts of crazy stuff. And I'm like, are we not? Like what, 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 we're, we're, boy, we're boycotting Aquaman. The, the that, that, that never happened though. We're talking about that never happened. Google erased it. Yeah, I guess so. But um, <laughs> let's 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 not erase um, our audience tonight. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's tell them about this. A cure live action movie reportedly moving with forward with Taki or Taki or Waki Twitini. All right, hold hold that thought. Skip and Tosh is our first <laughs> chat person. <laughs> Uh, tonight, welcome. I don't know if Skip's been first. Oh man, fighting off a cough. I don't know if Skip has been first uh, before, but he's first tonight. HR goes vocals here tonight. Eb Brewers in the house. Zach Richmond, fresh from vacation, apparently out in Alabama, the new uh, tourist mecca of the United States. Um, who else is here tonight that I'm recognizing? Jimmy's in the house. Our our friend Jimmy. And uh, Jay's also here, hopefully not, uh, uh, man, not to continue uh, trying to roast us. Um, uh, but, who's uh, Jay again? Can't remember. That's not Jay, Jay Faircloth. Yeah, Jay. Oh, Jay. You recognize that name. You recognize I don't, that I, don't, name. I don't know who that is. Oh, man. I know so... Quirks. Oh, what's up, Quirks? My boy Quirks here. He's here to support us and uh, saying that Clara. It's gonna be the best time lord ever, Doctor Claire Oswald for Doctor Who season. So apparently, uh, Zach is uh, off vacationing with his parents, who are getting him drunk. I don't know what kind of family life Zach has, but well, well, they're gonna sum off to the highest bidder. That's how they roll over there, <laughs> man. <laughs> if I sound weird, I make these weird noises. It's like like my lungs are like I, I'm trying not to like cough into the mic. That's okay. If you're going to croak, do it live. Man, it's been rough, man. Uh, Easter service, I was like, go to church. We're singing song. I couldn't sing songs because I was like, every time I'd sing, a, I had to like cough. It was and really tough. The wor the, well, the worst part is when the, 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 the sermon, it's really quiet in the church. Try not to cough. That's for me. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> well, if I'm if I'm just sitting there though, like the cough's under control. Yeah. But the, I think it's like when I'm talking or singing, where like the vibrations they start stirring up the mucus well, in the lungs, that's what makes you cough. When I'm sick and I have the, I have a, a not can't stop coughing. It's like that bad of a cough. You know. It's oh, like, if you're that I, sick in this day and age, you don't even go to church. Like in the COVID era, like well, I, now COVID era before that, but, but like yeah, before yeah. the COVID thing. Yeah, remember, remember, remember how it was it. before COVID? You could like show up to somewhere and just be hacking your lungs out, and like no one, like the people might look at you weird, but it was like, okay, I guess you're just you got a cough. <laughs> Nowadays, it's like you're a I'm leper, trying. you know, get away. <laughs> so that was me when I I watched the Wolverine, the sequel. You know, I wa I, I went. I, no, was it that? I can't remember what it was. It was one of the X it was one of the X Men movies. I can't remember what it was. I just got back. I was, I'd spent four days, you know, uh, over in, in Minnesota and like uh, went to like the, the Mall of America or whatever it's called. And then I went to like the, the Minneapolis, like, you know, the zoo. And then I got home and I was driving back from my sister's, like, and, I, and I, I'm like, oh, the movies, I'm going to watch a movie. And I got sick. I don't know why I came with that day. I was, I'm in the movie theater. I'm trying to, like, oh crap, I got to start coughing. Like, what the heck's going on here? And then, but the next day, I was just full blown flu. <laughs> but nobody said anything, you know. And I was, I'm also the person that, like, when I cough, I wait to the loudest part and then I cough. <laughs> so it's, it's like, so I was like, thank, I was thankful for all of the, all of the non quiet parts of that film. <laughs> but uh, uh, Skip says that tequila is devil's water. Te tequila. I think, is I think water. Skip might have a little that? little. Uh, Little prejudice towards the Mexicans. Uh, uh, you, you should get the rocks tequila. That's why drinking the bad tequila. Get the these tequila, guys on. Tequila is good. Yeah. So I'm more good. of a vodka guy. I'm a vodka guy. Vodka's good too. Vodka's pretty good. He's it's a lovely nature. I drink the vodka. Most most people uh, don't drink vodka straight though, so. Well, I do. I don't want to be gay and drink vodka. That'd be weird. You don't drink the gay vodka. You drink the straight vodka. <laughs> you still need the straight vodka. Uh, Austin says he feels that way in the movie theater. He's self-conscious about everyone else's experience. He wouldn't want to have to go through hearing someone else coughing in a theater. Yeah, if I if I'm if I got a cough, I don't go to a movie. Just period, because I don't want to disrupt anyone's experience. Well, um, and I can tolerate if someone has a cough, like you cough a couple times throughout a movie, that's no big deal. But if you're coughing like every five minutes, it's like, okay, dude, you shouldn't be here. <laughs> well, that was me towards the end of the film. The very, the very end, I was just like, I just, I, I got home and I just felt slug. You know, you feel like you're just like really, really full blown sick. You're just so sluggish. You have no energy. That was, I got home the next day. I, I, I just, I slept for ten hours, and I was just like. Holy crud! What time is it? What day is it? I just felt that that worn out still after sleeping that much. You know, it was and it wasn't even the flu. It was just like, like I don't, I don't, I don't get the flu. Like my body, because I have my asthma, I I always just it goes from bronchitis and then I, I jump right into walking pneumonia. It's just it's just the way my my body is. It's designed the crappy immune system. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Yeah, the last time I got sick though, I just was uh, I COVID, and then I think uh, was it two years ago, my brother got home, and he got me sick around Easter. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, I haven't been sick in a good while. Like I get like where I'm not feeling well. Like I've got like. Like I ate something oh, no. wrong, and I'm yeah, I'm getting old. Like so, I get to this. No, problem. no, no. I, I just, I just read Skip comment about the water. His kids are half Mexican. That's why he said dirty water. <laughs> uh, he's just yeah, trying to make. Yeah. He's trying to make me feel guilty for my comments because I said uh, I don't. I don't feel guilty because I, 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 I assumed racism through <laughs> connecting tequila to Mexicans and. Then, uh, uh, Ash is going to make a formal apology for something he said 10 years ago in a tweet. Uh, is... <laughs> hey, man, if 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 Zach can be compared to the Fuhrer because he didn't want to buy uh, 
to buy a Power Man comic, I I can twist tequila well, into prejudice against Mexicans. It's not just that. I think he says since then he just kind of adds. It's just like it really started out that. But when we're doing, so if you watch us during the readings and some of the things he says, it's like I'm starting to questioning if it if it really is or not. <laughs> but uh. Austin says Skip like, has the Mexican pass. Yep. He's now immune. Although I would make the argument, just like Miles Morales, when you're part black, you're just black. Like, black dominates everything. So Miles Morales is also half Hispanic, but the half the uh, half Hispanic gets drowned away because he's just black. So I think, uh, I think Skip's kids might, you know, that the genes, they just might be suppressed. Uh, because of Skip's dominant black jeans. But I don't know. That's just the way I see it. Um, I love Mexicans. Um, I love tequila. Me too. I love Mexican food. Uh, I, I like I Mexican... Love... I like the people in Mexico. Not too fond of their government <laughs> and the corruption and the cartels. But, <laughs> man, if you go down to Mexico... I just wish I could. I wish I could live in that country and like not have all the corrupt. I would totally move to Mexico if you could avoid all that bad stuff. Mexican people uh, are really the, great. Yeah, if the cartel was uh, taken out, all that stuff, and the government was actually stronger, and like, yeah, it was, it was corrupt. Yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be nice. But uh, but the water, it's just so disgusting, dirty, and stuff. If people poop and clean and get their drinking water down the stream, no, thank you. Um, um they uh, kind of do that here uh, too. Well, well, yeah, <laughs> so then, I, 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 uh, I don't know what parts, maybe in some of the cities like New York and some parts of California. I don't know. Most of the country, like, we put our shit in the river. Our rivers are really polluted. Ours doesn't even make it to the river. Mike, Mike goes right to Lake Michigan. Oh, okay. Uh, Where does the water from Lake Michigan go to? Into the, over up into like Superior and all the different <laughs> <lakes>. <laughs> <laughs> Then it makes its way to the Hudson. Uh, then it, then it, yeah. But I mean, like. I, I know, of... Skip, my, my comment is not real genetics. It's more of just societal things. So I was making the comments before. If you're too, if you're a mixed race and one of those mixes is black, you're just black. If you're, if, if you're black and white, then you're black. If you're black and Mexican, you're just black. That's all I was saying. I don't. I don't mean anything disparaging by it. I'm just saying that's how we always identify it, right? We don't ever say Ob Obama is half white. We just call him black. But, you know, I, I'm, with Miles I Morales, just... no one, few people ever refer to Miles Morales as being Hispanic. Ash, just call Ash, black. Is yeah, Ash is not affiliated with anyway with my next comments. Uh, the fact that they're half Hispanic and half uh, black, they're going to be very, very... Uh... Let's just say they're gonna make their husband very, very happy. Sure, uh, when when he's uh, in trouble. It just, it just seems like you know the the women you know uh, uh, they tend to get little little hysterical, a little bit angry, yelling. I I, I, I hope and you can combine the two races that have the most uh, vocal women challenge accepted. I'd say. Hmm. Hopefully, though. I don't know. Skip can confirm on that. He's raising them. He can tell you if they're if they're angels or if they're like hyenas. I ain't going anywhere near that. I've already waded into socially <laughs> like Wait. social minefield. <laughs> okay, Mark. Oh man! In any other any other channel, you wouldn't be able to talk about this. I'd already be canceled. Well, but you can't you, cancel uh, something that doesn't really exist. Ah, yeah. Make fun well, of me now. I'm not I, having a channel. Well, I've always said you're kind of like the you know coast to coast YouTube. Coast to coast YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> we know you exist, but we don't want we don't watch. <laughs> I see if I can make this this so uh, yeah. Skip says that her youngest is fair skinned like her Mexican mom. Most don't think she's black. Oh, that's interesting. 
Uh. Ed says, answer the question. Oh, I, I missed, uh, missed a question. Did we miss a question? From, uh, from Ed? I just see to each their own. I don't know. Sorry, sorry, Ed. I don't know what the question is. Sorry. Speaking of questions, what's going on in the world of comics and geek lore and movies and well, other I was, things? As, as I said before, your favorite director, Takio Batiti, wants to do a live action Akira. Uh, Let's move it forward. I, with do, I do like Taika Waititi. I would not. <laughs> Excuse me, I would not put him on Akira. Uh, but he is going to be directing a, a, a Disney and Lucasfilm, a Star Wars uh, movie. Really? Where's, let me, I gotta see this. Hold on. Taika. What T T? Y T T? I think I spelled that right. Wait. Akira? Yeah. Yeah. See if that finds. I'm on comicbook.com. I can just send. I mean, he's a talented filmmaker. There could be a lot worse. Um, I guess as long as he doesn't make it like Thor, Ragnarok, like try to turn Akira all like slapsticky. Uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Says when it comes to anime films, uh, a few titles are bigger than Akira. Creator uh, Kachiro Otomo put the diff feature on the world stage decades ago. Uh, and now Akira's Hail is one of the best sci fi movies of all time. A few years back, before it surfaced, the Thor Raider art director was looking to take a crack at Akira with Hollywood adaption. Now, an update suggests that Batini is still working on the film. That date comes from Justin Kroll, the senior reporter at Deadline in the wake of the Star Wars celebration this weekend. It was there that Disney and Lucas confirmed Batini would be work directing a Star Wars film. Uh, but no word is given uh, on when. And then scrolls up that the answer to the question said the Star Wars flick would likely get away once with TDN finished with had his basically had his way with Akira. Yeah. This is yeah. a good question now. So this might get the audience involved here. Um, assuming an Akira movie was made, who would be the director you would want to see on it? Like if you if you were a big top like, Hollywood exec and you're like I got the rights to Akira I want to make this movie and you could hire any director you wanted to make the film who would you? I want the person that did the Netflix uh, Cowboy Bebop. Let's just continue that. Okay. Uh, I I don't know. <laughs> Jay doesn't um, need to troll you. You troll yourself. <laughs> here, let's pop this out here. Uh. No, no, because the reason I said okay, I called him Mark because he was waiting through the stuff. No, it was Austin says he doesn't know he hasn't seen Akira. What? 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 I saw oh Akira at that end scene where he has the cape on and then he's battling against his friend. It was just like over the top animation stuff, just like crazy. Um, mm. now story wise, go though animation I thought was really good. Story. I couldn't say it's one of the best stories. It's definitely an A to B. Gets you there. Um, oh, it was extremely, animation. extremely chopped up. Like it, yeah. they had to put in that entire manga into a two-hour movie. Just yeah, it was a pipe. The dream. animation was <laughs> the animation was good. Yeah, the animation was um, great. JJ Abrams. <laughs> J wow. Um, the Top Gun Maverick director. Yeah, that, uh, by the way, that is, his name is, um, oh, man, I was just about to say it, and then it went, escaped. Jo Joseph, Joseph Kosinski. Uh, oh, yeah, Joseph Kosinski, my bad. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. Um, so, Skip's uh, a little after my heart. My first thought was uh, Denny Villeneuve, too. Um, that's the director of... Uh, Dune also previously directed Blade Runner 2049. Um, both movies, in my opinion, were the best movies of their uh, individual years. Um, I could see Denny doing an Akira movie. That was my first thought. Uh, I love Joseph Kaczynski a lot, but for the same reasons, I wouldn't want Taika on it. 
ironically, is the same reason I wouldn't want Joseph. Although they're both really good filmmakers, so they could completely surprise me. And I go, oh, yeah. I, after seeing go, oh, I, I wanted them all along. Um, I just, I think Akira needs, if, if you're going to try to capture what the original, original movie and not change it, it needs a certain dark quality to it that someone like Denny could bring. Um, but I think those are good picks. Uh, Tehillim says he would want Robert Rodriguez to direct it. I Yikes. miss Robert Rodriguez doing movies. That's the thing. I feel like Yikes he's taking a break. Uh, <laughs> um... Uh, Jay's is Peter Lord of the Rings guy. <laughs> um, is Peter Jackson. Um, yeah. He might be interesting. I don't know if I've seen Peter go anywhere near sci-fi, though. Oh, but speaking of sci-fi and connecting to Peter Jackson, Neil Blomkamp might be someone who'd be interesting. Neil Blomkamp, interestingly enough, when Peter Jackson was supposed to produce the Halo movie once upon a time, like many years ago, like back when Peter Jackson was still huge. I think before he'd even done his Hobbit movies, they were talking about doing a Halo movie, Peter Jackson, and then he kind of got away, and then they he wanted Neil Blomkamp to do it, and everyone was like, who? Neil who? Um, And this and this is when Neil had only ever done the, sh the short film in South Africa. And uh, later on, Neil would go on to do District 9, which is probably his biggest film. He did Chappie, he did Elysium. Um, he's got a certain quality sci-fi. Yeah, he could be interesting. Luke Basson. Luke Basson? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd, that'd be interesting. Um, definitely wouldn't want, I would, definitely wouldn't want Quentin Tarantino. He put his own spin on it. Not to Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Ridley Scott is another one. Be so frightening. Yeah, Ridley Scott. Um, for sure. Really, really Scott in his prime. For sure. I, I think that's one of the reasons I like Denny. I think Denny is is kind of a kindred spirit to Ridley. Um, yeah, let's let's get Roman Polanski. He is good with kids. No, Austin, it wasn't a Peter Jackson Halo movie. Peter Jackson was going to be the producer. Um, he wasn't going to direct it himself. Um, but but he wanted, he picked out his personal director, which was Neil Blomkamp. And that's why the movie never got made. And I remember at the time, just thinking to myself, you know, and this is when, remember, when Peter Jackson was riding high, uh, and I was like, wait, you got Peter, Peter Jackson to helm this, like, as a producer, an executive producer, like, run the whole show and pick out his own director. And this is the guy he wants. And you're going to say, nah, we're not going to make it because of that. Like, what? Like, and, and of course, we never got a Halo movie. And I think the window is closed on that. I don't think we'll ever get a Halo movie. Um, let's see. Taika Waititi loves to insert himself in all his movies. You don't need a jerk like that on Akira. I don't think inserting yourself into your movies makes you a jerk. And I also don't think he inserts himself on every movie. Um, but, but, you know, I guess that's me. Um, I agree, Austin. I think it would have been awesome. I like Neil. It turns out I, I like Neil Blumkamp. And that was the thing, too, because he hadn't. There was an argument once upon a time because it's like, well, Neil Blomkamp hasn't really done a real movie. He did this one short film, which, by the way, was super impressive. But he only did this it was a real short film. And then so people are like, yeah. And then he did District Nine. And then everyone's like, wait, this is the guy that was gonna do Halo? Like, and you said no. And like, what what? It's <laughs> Chappie, like, right? He also did Chappie. He did, yeah, Chappie. he did Chappie and Elysium later. Um uh, <laughs> even Japan would call Taika Watiti Akira trash. Well I I have, I have the perfect director for this movie. And I just see him just putting his own spin on it. We're gonna have Woody Allen direct Akira. What? You're now you're trolling worse than Jay. <laughs> Can we? Or, I don't think anybody's worse than Jay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, um. Here's the thing. I I wouldn't. 
I wouldn't cast Taika based on what I know. I think he's a really talented director, but, but I remember also once upon a time going, wait, you want Sam Raimi to do a Spider-Man movie? Evil dead guy, Spider-Man. I was like, you're, you're smoking some crack. Then you turn in hindsight and we go, oh yeah, that was brilliant. So you just never know is all I'm trying to say is Taika could be a similar type of situation where yes, he likes to do these certain types of films and there's a certain style to them and it seems very incompatible to what Akira would be, but he might have this other side of him that we don't know. And he might be a big fan and that's all I'm saying. Um, so I'm, I'm, I would be open to, to being surprised. Um, Tom Taylor for Akira script writer. Oh, jeez. Uh, okay, you get Guy Ritchie to do it. Guy Ritchie? Uh, I love Guy Ritchie, but no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Did you see his new Jake uh, movie with Jake Gyllenhaal and Anthony Stark? No. Went out this uh, month. Uh-uh. This month, April, April 21st. It's called, it called? Uh, The Covenant. The Covenant. It's a, during a war in Afghanistan, a local interpreter risks his own life to carry an injured sergeant across miles of grueling terrain. It's got uh, Anthony Starr, Homelander, Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, Bobby Schofield. You recognize him as being Badger on Breaking Bad. Uh, Emily Beach. I'm not sure where she she's from, but then you got Alex uh, Alexander Ludwig. Like I think it's from Vikings. Yeah, and it just kind of just popped out of nowhere. I was like, what is this? I can't hear this. Huh? Yeah. Well, so I like Guy Ritchie. I got to say, I'm always a little bit uh, reserved when I, I like see him movies, operating though. outside of his wheelhouse. When yeah. when Guy Ritchie is doing like crime noir stuff, it's exceptional. When he starts it, adventuring out of his genres, like the King Arthur movie, like... Yeah. He's he, it's not his strength. Let's just say that. <laughs> well, like I said, I I kind of like the these kind of little war movies. Um, I'm trying to remember who directed. Uh, it was it was Men of Valor. I think is what it's called. I, as I, right, I and I love movie. war movies too. I'm just yeah. saying yeah. I haven't seen Guy Ritchie excel in that area. So hopefully he does. But when he's doing like British crime stuff. Then he's yeah. amazing. Um, so, have you never seen Act or actually Act of Value? It's called Act of Value. Yeah, I've seen it. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, Good. this is in my like I'm predisposed to like a film like this, so it's already going to come over easier on me because I like these type of films. But yeah. even still, like, we'll see. I I I, I get excited if you said like he's doing another snatch type movie i'll get super excited if you say oh he's doing a fantasy film yeah. i'll be like eh. you hear it guys <laughs> ash gets excited over snatch yeah who doesn't get excited over snatch uh some women and some guys <laughs> um says to knowing taika white td these days politics is his main focus point I don't know if that's fair to say. I seems like Marvel's more that way, and maybe maybe it's not Taika that's the problem. Maybe it's Disney, because you notice that Taika only ever seems to people have criticism about him when he's doing Disney stuff. So maybe it's Disney is the issue, not him. Um, I'm trying to think, there's a movie Austin says, Taika. "What's Snatch?" Oh, Austin, one day when you grow up. Google and, and, and Google and is directed on image. One day and girls start getting attractive to you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, Snatch is a movie uh, by Guy Ritchie. It's one of his, it's probably his best film that he's ever done. Um, and it's a British crime thriller. Uh, Brad Pitt actually stars in it, so it does have a big Hollywood actor. But yeah, great. Uh, his other movie is the movie that put him on the map is called Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. That was his first movie. It's really indie, really good. And then Snatch 
is like a spiritual successor to it where he kind of got a bigger budget and bigger and that 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 movie is phenomenal um both of those movies are the reason why i'm a guy Ritchie fan every time he makes a movie i'm hoping that it's gonna go back to that greatness so yeah i'll be seeing this i i, I try to see anything guy Ritchie does um because even when he even when he's not a hundred percent like his King Arthur movie. There's still value in watching it. I mean, that he's still, he still has that certain thing about him that makes like, you know, just like your favorite comic writer or artist or whatever. Like it may not be the best thing that they're doing, but if, if you're a really big fan of their stuff, then um, yeah. Speaking of fans of stuff, Stranger yeah, Things is doing a Saturday morning cartoon. Is this going to be right up your alley? Are you going to become a Stranger Things fan now, Vankman, finally, that there's going to be a Saturday morning cartoon? Anime? Or is it going to be like a cartoon Saturday morning film? cartoon? Uh, I don't believe in that. That's false advertising because everybody knows there's no cartoons on Saturdays anymore. Netflix announced an untitled Stranger Things animated series in the works from the Duffer Brothers. Netflix, Netflix confirmed in a press release that it had a greenlit the series which will be set within the Stranger Things universe. Um, producers include the Duffer Brothers. Man. I should not have done the stream tonight. Creators of the Stranger Things on behalf of their production company, Upside Down Pictures, as well as Sean Levy and blah, blah, blah. We don't care about all the technical stuff. We've always dreamed of an animated Stranger Things in the vein of the Saturday morning cartoons that we grew up loving. And to see this dream realize has been absolutely thrilling. The Duffer Brothers said, we couldn't be more blown away with what Eric Robles and his team have come up with. The scripts, the artwork are incredible, and we can't wait to share this with you. The adventures continue. So, I have to say, as a Stranger Things fan, I don't really care about a cartoon series. However, growing up in the 80s, Saturday morning cartoons was was like a pillar of my life. <laughs> and the Duffer Brothers, one of the things they managed to do with Stranger Things, they didn't just make a good show. They made a really good show that really captured the nostalgia for me of the 80s. And I'm usually not a person who gets caught up in nostalgia. So if anyone can bring me back to... If I, like I, When I hear Saturday morning cartoons coming from them, I'm like... These guys might have an idea. Like, if, if you can make me feel like I did when Saturday morning cartoons, uh, I, I might be interested. Uh, you don't you seem know, to care to too much about it. You, were you, was Saturday morning cartoons kind of already dead when you were a kid? They died after 2001. Uh, the last Saturday morning cartoon was Batman Beyond, and then you had Justice League. Unlimited. It's like 2000, 2000. Like that pretty much killed like Babbitt Beyond. Babbitt, you know, it was, it was still on, so it was Batman series, but then like because they wanted to do a Justice League series on Cartoon Network, they killed the Batman anime series and Babbitt Beyond canceled because of it. And people were pissed off. Such I was pissed off. But there wasn't really much on. Like toward like it started the nineties was early nineties, a lot of cool stuff. Eighty late eighties, the nineties, a lot of cool Saturday morning cartoons. Cause I didn't have cable. I had basic channels. I had the you know, basic, you know, like for me, I had 18, 24, and 12. You know, those were the, and then you had CB8, CBS was my channel 58, whatever. Like that was a big thing, you know, I had living channels. Like at noon, you guys, so you got the like 11 o'clock, the uh, UPN, whatever, you know, would become like, oh, this is your, uh, they basically like, we're going to sell cars now here. So it's like, you know, these are cars you can bid on right now. They're available for sale. It's like, what the heck? Use car lot thing. Um, but ABC had like real Ghostbusters. He had uh, what was it? Bump of the Bump of the Night and some other stuff. Like start out start out with like you because ABC was also had to deal with Disney, so you had like Gummy Bears in the early nineties, Rescue Rangers, you know, Hillspin. But then by like the mid nineties, the only thing that was on was like Pokemon. Uh, what was it? Uh, you had. Batman animated series, which was like the new animated series, you know, version. And then it, that eventually turned into Batman Beyond. And then you had Power Rangers. 
and I'm trying to think what the other one was. Like, there was another show on, but a lot of the cartoons, pretty much by the late by mid to late nineties, were kind of gone. It wasn't until the early two thousands, after Just League uh, Limited was ended, that cartoons on Saturday mornings were just done with because people. They, and then we could. I think it was because of the, it was the birth of the streaming services. People were able to stream and just watch stuff through that versus that. Uh, because a lot of a lot of basic uh, channels didn't want to do the production anymore as far as for cartoons for whatever reason. So I don't know. Could it be because of the ratings, or could it be because of the fact that these these people who were doing the cartoons wanted to pull them off and put them on streaming services, to make more money, hmm. or instead of having it for free. The Helen says that the Duffer Brothers are basically in a race against time because of the aging actors for their stories. Um, I'm not sure I agree with that because one of the things that stranger things has been doing quite well is is uh kind of spacing off the stories so that th they take place during kind of the age of the of the actors not like like an immediate sequel like oh like a year and a half has gone by of time and so the kids are naturally older um which I think has made it interesting. It was it was something that worked really well for the Harry Potter series. Like the kids never grew out of the series because in the books they grew up. So as you did the movies, they the kids were growing up through the movies just like they did in the books, and so that actually worked. Cobra Kai, uh, as he mentions, is a little bit more of a victim to that, but the the benefit of an original material piece is that you really can't outgrow because you're not tied into, you know, anything like you can make your story like for Cobra Kai, for instance, like who, who's to say that the, that the show has to take place when the kids are all in high school, like that show could continue on where they're in college or whatever. So we don't know. They're not, they're not with any boundaries, but speaking of boundaries, um, what do you think about this Marvel teasing a Sorcerer Supreme War? Or should we even care? Uh, I don't really care for any crossover events going on in Marvel. Because there's one every... It used to be every two to three, five... Actually, we're going over this. Me and Zach were talking about this. And it was in a, in a look at where Every five years, after, you know, it started with the Secret Wars. You know, you get Secret Wars 2. And then there's a five-year, almost a five, nine-year gap before the world events happen, you know, you still need to do small stuff like execution or song of the X-Men, but like the world change events wasn't the next one to happen after that, after like secret wars, wasn't even heroes are born. That stuff like the world changing event was civil war. And then after civil war, you had, you know, original sand, you know, all these different things come out. So at this point, I, I just stopped caring because you fired every that were not you, but I mean Marvel got rid of all the, the older writers, the ones who actually knew what to write, and instead brought in these younger writers or younger wannabe writers who were just there for agenda. Uh, the ones who are left here, like you know, there, there, there's some breakout stars. You can say like you could argue that Darny Cates, you no, know, was a breakout star. Uh, they don't really like him in person. It's for some of the stuff he said himself, you know, ways acted uh, online, but. We're all human. We all have our own opinions, all stuff, you know, whatever. But uh, Jed McKay, is, like I said, like, it's very few people that I actually do follow around Marvel still. But like I said, the world events, I, this is one thing. And, and, and I know E's argued this too. Not everything has to be connected. I would literally love to have uh, a writer, I'm following him, you know, do an ongoing series, and not have it, his ongoing series connect to whatever the hell they're doing is in another event. Like, if you want to include them in that, sure. But make it so the writer who's actually writing ongoing doesn't have to acknowledge it. Because they don't care about continuity anyway. So why are they forcing me to... Yeah, like I said, it's, it's becoming more agenda stuff. But like I said, Source of Supreme right now is being written by Jen McKay. Um, now, if it's a mini event that he's writing by himself and he doesn't include anything else that's going on at Marvel, sure, then I'll probably read it. But... Right now, Sorcerer um, Stephen Strange. Even be even back then, I wasn't really reading the books. You know, my big thing at Marvel was Spider Man, so I probably mm -hmm. won't be reading this. Uh, I'm not going to be reading this. Um, yeah. I 
personally, I, I, I look, man, I, I understand I, the event I'm fatigue. Not, I, 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 I'm not trying to bring up an argument about events and event fatigue and stuff. It's more about no, this, the, the, about the Sorcerer Supreme. My take on this is the such. Stop calling Doctor Strange the Sorcerer Supreme. If he's not going to be the Sorcerer Supreme, which clearly he hasn't been in many years because you're constantly putting up other people taking his place or what have you, like just start calling him like the Sorcerer Mid or well, is, one of the yeah, better Sorcerers yeah. or like he's either the Sorcerer Supreme, meaning Supreme, meaning you have no peer. You are the top dog. <laughs> You you're the Roman Reigns of sort. Oh wait, no, that is a bad analogy. You are uh, you're the supreme guy. Like they call him the Sorcerer Supreme, and then constantly like are putting him up on the ropes of other like, oh, he's not really the best sorcerer. Oh, his wife's got to take over for him. Like, oh, shut up. I'm getting just Doctor Strange fatigue. Like, I'm getting to the point of like wondering why does anyone even care about this character when they just keep beating him down. And to me, he's just becoming this sort of like side character in his own, his own book, his own yeah, so universe. Like to me, like Marvel universe, like Doctor Strange was all, I was never as Doctor Strange fan as far as reading his own books, but every time Doctor Strange would guest appear in a book that I did read, it was, it was like a, a moment, momentous occasion. I was like, Ooh, Doctor Strange is here. Like, this is a super badass of the Marvel universe. Like, and nowadays I'm just like, who cares? Whatever. Yeah. Um. He's now that he's back to life. He's back to being Sorcerer Supreme. Yeah. Yeah, but is it just a stupid title that doesn't mean anything? Well, he's a protect. I mean, that's how the MCU did it, right? The MCU. They, yeah, they... yeah, yeah. No, not really. And like, in the comic books, at least from his, according to the Judgment case of, he, Clea only took the name to keep it from Doom getting it. Otherwise, Doom was next in line for being Sorcerer Supreme. And so, so she's you know who should be Sorcerer Supreme. Whoever the supreme sorcerer is, Clea doesn't just get to take it so that Doom doesn't get it. That's that's not that's stupid. Like that, that's not how that works. Doom is one of the most preeminent sorcerers in the Marvel universe, and if and if Doctor Strange isn't around, and there's no one more powerful than Doom, and and hint, there is no one more powerful than Doom. But then he should take it. They've, like they've said that they said that Doom has respect for Steven. Because Stephen actually went on his way to help him try yep. to rescue his mom. Mm -hmm. You so could write, you know what? That's why you didn't fight it. You could have wrote a cool story in there, kind of like what Bendis did with Doom and Iron Man. Like, but well, whatever. Yeah, so that's that's, that's the only reason that Doom didn't uh, Doom didn't press it because out of respect for Stephen, you know. Well, I don't think Doom cares. Like, I don't think Doom cares about a stupid be, title you know. well no he just knows he's like i'm already badass like i don't need your stupid title that you just yeah, claim so, not, so yeah. i couldn't have it like it doesn't mean anything that's like in the mc like i roll my eyes every time like wong is the sorcerer supreme i'm like no you're not wong steven's back he's the sorcerer supreme but they like he's, it's a title no it's a title he, so wong gets to keep it according to some sort of bureaucracy and i'm like this is stupid like like yeah. you're either the uh, supreme do, sorcerer or you're not. We do not condone Asian hate on this, just because he starts. <laughs> uh, that's funny. That was a good one. All right, so uh, um, he's not Wong, or is he Wong? Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Um, uh, yeah. No one else seems to Dude. care, so we'll move on. Um. Sony's El Murito Spider-Man spinoff at Standstill, apparently. You heard about this, Sony's? Who's going to do this? The film was, like, they, they was basically it's called, they was told me did El Murito, or M-U-R-E-R-T-O. -E film featuring a Marvel character that's appeared in just three comic books. Okay, and it doesn't look like the future will make its release. Now, a pre-profile -pro magazine, a star Bad Bunny had to discouraging words for fans. Since given the release date, you know, is now eight months away, production of the caliber would have been uh, you know, I guess so. I'll, I'll explain it. The El Morito Mar Spider Man, I guess, was supposed to be like El Morito. Um, yes, <laughs> I, well, I, I don't, I don't care how you pronounce it, or whatever. It doesn't make give a gives a shit. It, it, I guess, it was supposed to be um, 
was it supposed to be the 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 the, the wrestler that fought against know. him? I, I have no idea. In the first movie, like, there, remember? Do you remember Roberto uh, Ramos? The, the whatever whatever his name is. He did the um. They did that Spider Man story back in the two thousands. They had Spider Man going against a luchador. Like, I think that's supposed to be like the luchador thing. I have to look more into it. But, I mean, it, to me, it's just like. I, I don't need Spider Verse stuff in movie form. I just, I I, just, I already have the Spider Verse, you know, as far as the anime one. Uh, yeah. Is it? Hey. Yeah. Is it Aztec Zombie? Is a fictional character comic book created by Eric, uh, Javier Hernandez? And uh, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Like, at this point, because they're doing the Metal Web stuff, I don't care about that. You want to do? You know what I do want? If Sony, you want to do something that's not Spider-Man rated, do Silver Sable. This, to me, seems like is an April 1st story. I, there, there, there's, is there a nothing burger bigger than this? El Muerto is getting a film? No one even knows who El Muerto is. RDV can't even pronounce the name. No one gives a shit about this. How, what the hell is going on at Sony? You're gonna for you make the Venom movies without Spider Man. I think it's a dumb idea. I think you're misusing a really good IP. But at least Venom is a big enough name that you could do that. Then you're gonna do Morbius, and you get some diehard Marvel fans defending it just because they want to see any Marvel character on the big screen. Whatever. Okay, fine. A Morbius film. Now you're gonna put um, what's his name? Uh the Craven, you're gonna give Craven a film, except he's not a yeah, hunter, he's an animal rights activist. I, and I'm like, what? Just, and now, of this, after that, you're gonna do El Muerto? What? Instead of the, instead of this, instead of this, the Craven, all that crap, just give me Kick Ass Three. Sure. Yeah, but I'd rather have that. Not, but, I mean, I'm not the huge Aaron, you know, Taylor Johnson fan, you know, but I mean, like, it's. I don't care for exactly what you're saying. I don't care for them without Spider Man. Venom, El Muerto, even if with, even if you, but El yeah. Muerto, <laughs> I wouldn't even put yeah, El Muerto in a Spider Man movie. Like, what? Yeah, what? Like, so I just said, I, so, I just my, who, who's over there at Sony going, man, we have too much money. How do we burn it? Well, How do we well, totally well, burn is, money? Is this like I a Brewster's see... Millions joke where they're like, no, we have to I lose money the... no. super fast? Here's the thing, though. Bad Bunny is a very popular, like, you know, a singer, musician. Maybe, he, you know, and getting him, he wanted to do this. Sony was looking forward to, you know what? You know, he's he could bring, uh, you know, it might draw in some money because he's like, he's a big name. You know. I guess. Sure. I've never I mean, heard of this guy. I know you haven't either. I didn't hear until until about like a couple years ago. Yeah, and WWE started using he we re wrestled on Monday Night Raw. Bad Bunny. Yeah. We were just you know I guess I'm just getting old. Am I, am I just old. am I just getting into a world that I don't understand? <laughs> like I'm just you you you've gone past that. Just eat your pudding. <laughs> I mean, look, I, right? I mean, because here I am thinking about how ludicrous and stupid this is, and then. I'm I'm kind of imagining in the future in 2024 where I go. This movie made how much? It's the number one movie of the year. Like I'm just like, what if this movie? Like what if, what if I'm the person who doesn't understand? But we're not in the future yet. We're in the present, and I'm I'm willing to put it all put it out there. I and I'll be wrong if I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. This this just seems like Sony Pictures going. We just want to burn money. Just I I. Like I said, they're trying to stay relevant. They have all these, they write to these characters. So they want to start. Using oh, I get money. it. I get that they want so, to stay relevant, so, but so that's, they have people yeah, it, in charge making retarded decisions in the name of relevancy. I, I, like, I agree. Like Bud Light. We need to stay relevant. We need to put what's his name on our cans. Dylan Mulvaney on our cans. It's like, no. People who want to drink Bud Light don't want Dylan Mulvaney. People who want comic book films. Who wants Spider Man comic films? Don't want an El Muerto movie. Like, we staying relevant, hundred percent, totally get it. You want to use Bad Bunny, maybe because he's fine, but find a good project. Don't take your potential 
and uh, put it through it, a wood I, chipper. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. I mentioned that. I already said Silver Sable. Silver Sable is a female spy movie. They can do that if they want to. Well, you can. You uh, couldn't have. You couldn't use Bad Bunny in that way. But I agree. Yeah, Silver no, no, Sable no, is wait, a property. I, I, no, I wouldn't want to see him dressing up as a girl. No, um, but Silver Sable is a property. You don't need to have Spider Man whatsoever in it at all. Um, and then. Marvel currently owns the right to the Punisher. They can't really use Punisher, but they can use some of the other assassins, you know, that have been used in the Marvel Universe if they want to. Um, like I said, like, I, people want a Black Cat movie. Well, Mar then, uh, right now, they have I, they have access to the rights for, uh, as far as the rights to do, use Black Cat. They could do a Black Cat movie without Spider-Man if they wanted to. As long as they don't do an evil Black Cat movie. But don't... Uh, well, she is evil. She's a woman. <sighs> but it's, uh, uh, no. Like I said, I would. Like I said, I personally, the, the smartest thing they could do would be a Silver Sable movie and just do a Silver Sable franchise. You don't need Spider Man whatsoever. It's a comic book character, um, and you can introduce it to the new crowd as far as the new the normies who don't know where the character is. All right. First, um, I'll can... take a pause for a second. First, I want to say hello to Nalo, uh, who is an old. Like affiliate of ash on comics welcome I haven't seen you around in a while i hope you've uh hope life has been That's good cool. to you um, um thanks for stopping by and saying hello hopefully you're still here to hear this um that, also he you know, just noticed him i noticed him before <laughs> but i couldn't get a couldn't cut you off um well, you were skip, talking the whole time what do you mean <laughs> no i wasn't anyways <laughs> Skip says Bad Bunny is a personality. He's super popular, but I don't believe he's good enough to carry a good movie to get enough homies to buy enough tickets. No reason. I, well, I don't know if he's good enough to carry a good movie. Obviously, he'd have to prove that. But I would say if he's in a really good movie, it won't matter. People enjoy movies all the time with people that they have no idea who it is. Like, if, if a movie is amazing... You you don't even need to the stars don't even matter. Oftentimes stars is what gets you to even give attention to the movie to go see it. So I understand that. I just think when you're talking superhero movies, most of the time people aren't like you're not going to see an Iron Man. Well, maybe that's not a good example. You're not going to see your typical Marvel movie because of the actor. You're going to see it because of the character. You either love Spider Man or you love Thor, or Captain America, or whatever the whole like, the 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 characters almost surpass the star these days in those types of movies. Elmerto, what the, what the? If you want to know. watch a good movie, go watch Source Code. I'm with you on Silver Sable. We live in an era where we're trying to be like, we need more women badasses and blah blah. Like, dude. Make a Silver Sable movie that's like Mission Impossible and throw in some cameos of like Marvel characters. That's it. You just have a badass chick spy flick with Silver Sable and in the middle of the spy flick and doing all this like Mission Impossible type stuff, you come across like Marvel characters so that it reminds you that you're in the Marvel Universe doesn't necessarily have to cross over and stuff, but imagine that. Like, imagine if like Mission Impossible took place and like somehow like Spider Man had a scene in it or something. Like, like I wouldn't want that in Mission Impossible. But I'm just saying, like, I, I think that's that's something you can do in Silver Sable that you can't do in a James Bond or a Mission Impossible movie. And you could oh. you could build a franchise around Silver Sable. Like, she's not popular in the comic books. But movies is a different thing. I mean, we just look at... Um, all we have to do is look at Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy didn't need success in the comic books. In fact, the fact that it was a very unpopular comic helped make it a super successful movie franchise. I think yeah, Silver Sable has that potential as well. Sony has rights to basically like Black Hat, Fancy Dan of the Enfor and other Enforcers... All the Green Goblins, Silvermane, who's the other mob boss, you know. Uh, you got, like, just, like, variation, different variations of Spider-Man they can use, right? You know? uh, they have Null, the symbiote god, and, uh, Wilson Fisk, and his son. They have all these different characters, like, in the, they have rights to, as far as Spider-Man, uh, uh, I guess, adjacent 
plus Spider-Man characters like they have, like uh, Julia Carpenter, former so uh, Spider Woman. They also have Ar- uh, Arachne, who was the other one. I uh, said like, they could literally do whatever they wanted to. They don't really need to have Spider Man for other stuff. Like now, I was don't want a Venom verse, you know. But I mean, like I would rather have Silver Sable or you know, and see some of these other characters like Silver Man, some of the Mafia. So you know, just whatever. Uh, even Kingpin, you know, like. If Marvel wants to do, as far as the MCU wants to have Spider-Man, guess what? We can have Miles Morales. They can do a lot more. They can do the Miles Morales Spider-Man verse. Do that. And you can use all these villains, Green Goblin, all that stuff. They could. I don't really know what's need. holding them back with the Miles Morales, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, you really need Peter Parker. There's gotta, you know what? There's gotta be. I don't know, man. I feel like there's gotta be some sort of, like, red tape behind the scenes they, they can't do a mile they can't do a miles morales a live action but you know but they can do a animated maybe all right cool then do the animated verse well they are yeah. doing the animated one well do the spider verse but i mean like do i want to have like more of him just in his own universe battling against like more more villains he already battled against kingpin let's and then uh lady octopus uh, uh, like, let's do a bunch more villains now you know introduce more characters and just yeah like right now, they're making bank using that technology as far as the animation. A lot of people like that. You know, that animation was so great that it inspired for Puss in Boots 2, a sequel. They used some of that animation style when, you know, when, they, when the kind of characters were fighting and running towards each other. Oh, those are really cool. Oh, um, dude, the animation, I, I have a lot of critiques for Spider Verse. Yeah. And the animation style is not one. Like when I watched <laughs> that movie, I was like, this is what a comic book movie should feel like. I was like, I will, I will ditch the live action, just make the entire MCU like. I just want to see Marvel Comics, the movies, like this. Um, not the story. Well, I didn't like the story, and I didn't like some of the character uh, yeah. ideas. But as far as how they executed it visually on screen, flawless. Yeah. Um. I was like, he's like, I want, I want to, I want, we don't, we want Black Cat with the Spider Man in the movie. We don't want this Black Cat by itself. I, my mind instantly just went back to the Alton Spider Man. For those who remember Alton Spider Man, Peter Parker, you know, she, he was a kid in that, you know, and Black Cat was older, did not realize that he was that young. So then when he, he took his unrealist mask off to kiss her, she realized how young he was and she felt so gross that she threw up. Like I was saying, like imagine if they would have done that situation. You know how how much crap they would have got if they would have pulled the Alton Spider Man move, where an older black cat is flirting with Spider Man, doesn't realize he's under age. Like, ugh. But like I said, like I I throw a black cat into there. I want Gwen Stacy, Spider Gwen, having a cat fight with Black Cat over Miles Morales. Let's do it. We don't need Peter Parker anymore. Peter Parker, you got Tom Holland over there. You can do stuff with that. With Mary Jane supposedly having remembering that Peter Parker is Spider Man in the fourth film. Yeah, that's the rumor that she's already back with him, which would be stupid. But so oh, said, not said, if like, it's not if it's not until the end of the movie. Like if so, we spend the whole so, movie and it's like about him trying to reconnect, and then it happens at the end. I think that'll be okay. If they do it like right at the beginning of the movie, then I'll be like, "Yeah, that would be that was stupid. You you did all so this." Some, so, so somebody said it's like we're done. We're done with the uh, Mary Jane. Let you know we don't need her in the mix movie. Let's introduce Gwen Stacy. No, <laughs> other people are like, "Let's introduce Black Cat." Honestly, if they introduce Black, not this next movie, but the movie after that, and then having her flirting with Spider Man. But then, like, maybe getting Mary Jane jealous, and then all that stuff, and just you know him being stuck in the middle. That's that's a Parker situation. That's the classic Parker luck. He didn't do anything wrong, but yet he's got two women fighting over him. But they probably will never do that. I don't think we're ever going to see Black Cat in uh, an MCU. I think because right now Sony still has rights, sir. Um. If anything, you know what I want? I want Toby freaking McGuire to be an older Spider Man. Bring him back because I want Spider Man four with him. Yeah, but he's a, he's a bit old for Spider Man, but I don't care. You know, it's we've had a life story. 
you know, that was good. Yeah, Life Story was good, but I mean, if I mean, if you could pull off a movie version of Life Story, that'd be amazing, right? I'd, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be that would be that, that that was one of the few comics that made me cry. Speaking of comics making you cry, we are here to talk about comics, not just stupid movie decisions and stupid movies and different things. And you guys are here as well. We've kept you waiting long enough. Let us talk about the star of the show, comic books. Are you guys reading these comic books? You better be reading this one. It's a buck ninety nine. If you're complaining that comic books are too expensive, well, you're complaining to the wrong person about this. You should, you have no excuses. You should be getting this book. It's a buck ninety nine. Even, even our boy Skip gets this book, and you know Skip, he's. He's the only person I know who's even more, how do I say, more particular about his books than I am, which I really appreciate. I don't say that to be disparaging in any way. I appreciate people who have, dis- uh, how do I say, particular tastes, um, hold things up to high standards. Um, let's see. Austin says, do not bring back Toby. His story <laughs> ended. The era uh, the movie made is over. I, I, I don't know. I, I, uh, we I, saw I, No Way Home, and we there was obviously more Toby stories. So, isn't yeah. actually? I think uh, people are saying online they said that in Toby's universe, most likely him and Mary Jane have a kid. So we get Spider yeah. Girl. I will say one thing about that. Yeah, I think in the movies. You have an opportunity to explore things that the comics never could or never should. I don't want to necessarily see Spider Man with a kid and all this, like, but it's in movies. And if it's not in continuity, but okay, it's basically a what if story. Yeah, Let's see it. In movies, they're aging. Yeah. Versus comic books, you know, they're kind of standing still, selling time scale. Um, into the Spider Verse, the show is a Peter Parker from the, the, from the 616 as a daughter now. Yep. All right. We're here to talk about Nightclub. Are you reading Nightclub, Bankman? I've never heard of this before. What is this? this... I was expecting a nightclub. This is a nightclub. This this party's dead. There's your puns for the night. Uh, This is Mark Millar's Nightclub. It is a buck 99. It is about three kids, and they are kids, high schoolers, who get the power get they turn into vampires and they decide to use their newfound powered life to become superheroes um which is not necessarily a bad premise for a comic book um unless they should get over their head and uh he ends up i was gonna say we'll get jump right into it because that, that's where it takes place right immediately right after that's the issue they were in a building and a bomb went off and he, you know, we see him. He's still alive, and he saved a baby, you know. And uh, yeah, pretty much they load him up in the ambulance. He's like, dude, like, let me go. It's like I'm gonna, you know, like, but well, we can't, man. Like, you know, don't be scared. We're doing the right thing. And then you see his his chest is just like, oh my gosh, how's he even talking? And then they pull his mask off, and then because he's in the sun, he starts he starts burning. And he quickly runs in, in the building and he's like, what are you doing? Oh, no, I'm not. And they're like, to start shooting him. He's like, he just. So he passes out. And then they throw him in, <laughs> into the morgue later on. But at first, his friends pretty much want to know. They're, they're, trying, they're like trying to figure out where this friend is. They, they, they said he took him to the hospital. So the, the girl basically, she kidnapped. Basically, not kidnapped, but she steals the ambulance. Uh, then they are chased by the cops. You know, she drives in here, and she's gonna hide under a sewer grate, and then they're like pretty much waiting. Like they need, they're hungry, they need an injury, and she says like, "Oh, look, free meals, mice, I mean the rats." He wakes up in the morgue. He's a naked dude. Thanks for the crotch shot, Mark Millar. Thanks. That's what I really wanted to see in my comic books. <laughs> uh, uh, just just to point out, Mark Millar is the writer. He didn't draw this. 
<laughs> you gotta, you gotta tell the artist. I don't want to see a penis in this. All right. Um, and he's stuck in there. He's trying to get out. He's like, and he's weak. He can't. He doesn't have his full strength. And he's, and he's like, oh man, he's like, he's hungry and stuff. You know. Uh, and he looks over and like, oh, there's a body here. And he's like, he eats it. He's like, oh, it's gross. It's like drinking sludge. You know. It's like apparently that's what he first realizes he is now. Uh, he needs to eat, drink live blood. Those he can't heal, and he's just trying to get out. And then the next panel, you see all these bats flying around everywhere. And then through the bottom, bottom right corner, you see that it's the guy from the first book, the guy who recruited him, the guy we also saw in the book before, uh, uh, bringing Granny into that house that they slaughtered the family. So he's there, and I just love this, like the the, the bats thing. They're like, what the hell? All they know is the guy for new is, is undead the kid and they're shooting him and then they you know open fire and just like and he just takes him out <laughs> one by one. He throws he just eats the guy into the light. <laughs> like that's freaky. You know, uh yeah, it breaks him out and like you know just basically he he's in trying he and his friends are in deep shit now. Because they basically, like, you know, expose them. They're not supposed to as vampires. Not anybody knows they exist. And, yeah. Throws them in there. Kind of, uh, kind of how it ends. All right, fan- fantastic the big, synopsis yeah. there. Yeah, I just want to... <laughs> it's a short book, man. I would expect. But I, I want to say, though... Um, obviously this takes place in a world where vampires exist, but nobody knows they exist. Like most vampire worlds. Just like our world. In the real realistic. Yeah, just, just like our world. Bit, yeah. This exactly, this, this totally is actually realistic to our world. Yeah. Night, Austin. <laughs> Good night, Austin. Um, so what do you think about this uh, issue? I felt... I just felt it was just too fast. You know, I, uh, I, I wish there would have been one couple, at least two more pages to move the story forward a little bit forward. Like I, like I said, like, it just, I, like, I just felt like, man, like, this was a... Uh, not phoning it in, but like a, a filler issue. Because now, cause now it's like, it's in the middle now. Because up to this point, they've been doing that stuff, and now we're gonna, now we're going to get to the meat and potatoes. Uh, are we gonna learn? Because we, because we've been fed all these little crumbs, you know. Uh, you know, as far as like the, as far as we saw the family, and then we saw the old granny, whatever. Like, you know, are, is he gonna tell them about this? You know, uh, you know what's gonna happen now? Like, how, you know, because I can't, I can't remember how many issues are left of this. I think it's a uh, limited two. series. It's a six issue series. Yeah. yeah. So now it's gonna the next issue is gonna just bring everything into like basically like like the. I guess not the climax, but pretty much getting to that the final act, so that uh, all the meat potatoes are gonna start, uh, you know, coming together, unless they do a cliffhanger on the issue six, and then you gotta wait the volume two. That could be, so, which yeah. I wouldn't have any problem with. If they can do a volume two and it's a buck ninety nine issue, I'll be all over it. My I like this good. series. I yeah. do like this series. I don't think I would like it at three ninety nine. No, but if they do this series, and then for whatever reason, you know, it goes a cliffhanger ending and it doesn't get continued, then I'm gonna be irked. But then again, I don't want them to rush the plot. You know, thinking that maybe they were going to get another volume, and then they and, they, and it, the sales just weren't out there, so they could only do so much. Mm-hmm. Like I hope there's like an alternate ending, like say so like you know. Here's the special story ending in case, you know, it's how it would have ended, you know. You know, like, I hope, like, because, like, honestly, I think if, if he did a Kickstarter, I think he'd probably do, we'd probably sell more. Um, I don't know why a Kickstarter would make it sell more. Because I think more people are, are tuned into Kickstarter for indie books versus just, uh, you know, yeah. this. 
And then, yeah, especially if you're, back, if, you're big, if you're a big name, like Mark Pilar's and Kickstarter, and you get incentives, like, you know, you get this here. More people are more attuned to the collectors, the back end. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that I don't know, man. I don't know. I do know that Mark doesn't do these books really for profit. Um, he does it because no. he loves comics. His pr his primary job is to make products for Netflix, and Netflix gives him permission essentially to take the stuff that he develops and turn them into comics as well. So I, I heard on an interview that he he said that m much of the stuff he develops at Netflix is like he develops it straight for Netflix, but some of the stuff is like comic book oriented. And he loves comics, so he develops it also into a comic on the side. So it seems like what Netflix is doing is adapting the comics when realistically, in at least the newer cases, not necessarily from the older stuff, the newer cases, it was developed directly for Netflix. The comic was just something he did on the side because he likes making comics and putting it out there. Um, so Netflix has been apparently according to him real positive with that and said, yeah, go to town, go, go do it. Um, so um, I hope, I hope this gets adapted into a Netflix show. This could be, I think I was just going to say that, man, I think this could be a better TV show than even a comic book. Um, when they Cobra I, Kai kid, if he's not busy with DC, bring him in and let him be the main dude in this. Right. Seriously. There you go. Yeah. Let me go. Yeah. I I could see I could see this being a very interesting sort of coming of age sort of like kids you know like, like a teenage show um yeah I I I like the comp book like I said if it were 3.99 would I still be buying it Probably, I mean, I'd probably be getting the first series, but I would want to see it continued. It's not, and I don't want to make people feel bad. Like, not, I don't want to discourage anyone not to get it. Like, it's one of those weird things where at buck ninety nine, I'm ecstatic and I really enjoy the book. And like you and I both, we we behind the scenes, but before we did the show tonight, we talking about it. You and I said the first same thing. We're like, wow, that was a really short book. Like, and I was like, yeah, yeah I started reading it, and boom, it was over. But I didn't care because I only spent a buck ninety nine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if I had spent four bucks or like some other comics, like five, six bucks, I would have been like, dude, no, that's not worth it. But I totally like I'm like down buck ninety nine. Keep keep them coming. Like I, it's not that I don't enjoy the book at all. It's just more of a value proposition. Um, you, you, you know, I have the the main the guys in there in the chair. If he was a little younger, I'd have Chris Christopherson. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, like 40 <laughs> years ago. Jeez. He was already I, old and blade. I know. <laughs> he's, he's 86 years old. Yikes. He can still do it. He's like, he's like, yeah, he's this, uh, no, I was he, turning no, back in the Civil War. 86 no, year old guy. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. I do like here too that they they made the girl kind of the clever one. Yeah, yeah. Some would say that's racist because you don't be fat kid. Is is I don't think that's like... racist. You mean I, I think what you're saying is more like cliche. Well, uh, no, because he's black. That's right. So it's racist. <laughs> the the fat kid the, is black. The Asian, the Asian girl. The Asian girl's smart. <laughs> Is the, is the fat kid black? I always kind of thought they were like, what's that? He's Asian. He, he's like, the, the main guy's Latino. And then, yeah, they like, it's black. There's a term that uh, our boy Zach always uses where it's like non, what is it? Nondescript ethnic. Black Asian. He's, he talks about like the, the, the nondescript ethnic background or something like that, where it's like, you know, they're not white. You're just not quite sure what they actually are. They could almost fit like any ethnic background. Um, that's a, kind of how let's I ask, always saw them. Let's ask a black guy. Ask black. <laughs> <laughs> and our yeah. next feature on our new feature on late night comics, ask a black guy. Um, 
No, but I liked Speak. I liked her. That like they made her kind of the clever one because, you know, the main character here he gets caught in the ambulance and of course you know I, I when I was reading it, I was like oh no they're gonna pull off his costume and the sun and like I saw all this coming, and then we get the repeat where the other kids are uncovered and they get put in the ambulance like oh the same thing's gonna happen but she has a plan, you know and she's like because and I was reading this I was like just say you're allergic to sunlight you don't have to say you're a vampire, and so that's exactly kind of what she does she's like we got this photo. Yeah. What is she? She photo something or other. She calls it, um, which I believe is a real condition. And you know we can't we can't be exposed to light or whatever. And then when they're not looking, she kicks them out of the van and hijacks it. She didn't kick them. She threw them out. <laughs> Look at my, look how yeah. far they flew. <laughs> yeah, that was that's pretty rough. Um, but she's got a cool like she gets to a place where there's you know out of the sunlight. Um, and, uh, you know, they have to deal with the cops, but, you know, she, she's with her friend and she's like, oh, I'm, I'm bleeding and I need, you know, blood or whatever. And there was a really cool scene where she's just like, where are we going to get blood down here? And she says, I'm having it delivered. And if you remember, she was the one that caught on using the powers side yeah, more than so the other two. The rats. Yep. So she's controlling the rats and stuff. And. I just, for something about it, I just really liked that they, like, highlighted her having to use her wits. And I and I, I find myself feeling yeah. a little bit inconsistent, but not really. Because I hate how in Marvel Comics or, DC, like, just in modern general where it's always, like, got to make the girl the smart one and the guy's always stupid. You know, where it's, like, it, that's not what they're really doing here. They're not making it, like, oh, she's super genius. What they're portraying, though, is that she has to use her wits, which makes sense because if you're a girl, girls don't typically grow up relying on brawn. Girls grow up having, because of their physicality, they often rely on she, using their wits, would, which, and that's not always being like a super genius, yeah. but it's manipulating social situations and things like that. And that's a true, like, biological thing. Like, women. That's why women typically are better manipulators than men because they grew up their whole life learning how to deal with situations in this yes. way. So I just liked it. I'm trying to say here in an awkward way that that carries over to her too. Um, I gotta say she looks really creepy with her glowing red eyes eating the rat and handing yeah. him one. Yeah. And like, uh, uh. <laughs> It always reminds me of you when you see like in the movies you see like the vampire lady and she's like coming at you and the, the main guy's gonna kill her. How uh, just disturbing she looks and like it was like ah. So, yeah, and this is Vanklin's favorite of, page. It's gonna keep uh, that up on the screen for RDV. Well, he really doesn't even have anything. If you look at it, you can zoom in. There's just nothing there. <laughs> oh, he has Oogie Boogie tattoo on his left shoulder. Um. Uh, yeah, well, I enjoyed the book. Yeah. I did find it was a little short, yeah. but I'm out, I'm having a lot of fun. The um, bat scene here, I was I'm like, did Batman call his bats? <laughs> the, the, the sonic device, right? I think I'm Batman here one. <laughs> yeah, and then they all turn into the battle of bats, become the guy, and he goes, "That is freaky." So now he has to like brainwash the whole entire hospital that nothing happened. Well, the other thing we point oh, we skipped the glance over too. There's a scene in there when they're looking at the camera, looking yeah. at the kid, and all they see is a shirt. Yeah, because he can't be caught on vampires. Yeah. They can only be seen with the naked eye. Yeah. Like you can't see the reflection or video cameras, I don't think see him. You can go one back over page. And they see her there in the middle. See? That's a crazy thing. We, we can't get a picture. All I see is a pair of jeans floating around. <laughs> I, I thought that was kind of cool. Like, they keep the trope in myself, you know. It's not even this gold because how many how many vampire like traits do you see in this book that are normally in a vampire altogether? Like, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a, just a bringing in like, I want to I wanna know what book was uh 
was, was Mark or, or not old book, but I'll be like, well, what was he inspired? What as far as what vampire stuff is he was he inspired by his favorite movie? It's like so. But every time I see the glowing green eyes, I think of evil Ernie now. Oh I'm yeah. I, I didn't now now all that's not all that's all I'll think now. Because you pointed that out. <laughs> But evil Ernie looks Ernie. more. Yeah. At first, I was like, oh, that could be Danny Trejo. The casting, but I was like, wait, he's too old now. Yeah. So then so I saw, like, like 40 then, years then, ago. Then I thought, so then I, I thought, he's like, hey, he's got the, the Navy cap on, the Navy hat, and Sailor's wearing, he's got the long jacket. Oh, Chris, Chris, Chris Kurtofferson, or he's called it. I was, I was like, but he's way too old. Way too old. Because Charles Bronson used to wear the hat, like, too, like when he was Paul Piercy, walking around. Death Wish. Mm -hmm. That was his outfit too, the, with the mustache. Yeah, but the way he this guy dressed, I'm I'm assuming he's from the 1700s. Yeah, he does have a weird yeah. outfit. Yeah, he's got a hoodie, but he's got that he's got that old like, colonial jacket, the buttons. Close it. Yeah. Uh, All uh, right. Well, so uh, I'm I'm satisfied with the book. I'm enjoying it. Are you looking forward to the next issue? I'm chomp I'm champing at the bed. Thank you, Eric Brain. I'll I'll always say champing now. Champing. I used to say chomping at the bed. Yeah, champing is the correct term. Champing. What? Chomping. Yeah. That, that's what I say. If you look online, it says champing at the bed. What? It's that doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Don't ask me. I think everyone's wrong. I think we're right. <laughs> wow. That's weird. That's one of those weird things that, like, if that's true, like, I've never heard anyone say that. But Exactly. It's, 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 it's the, um, what's it called? Mandela effect? The Mandela effect, yeah. That's a really interesting <laughs> phenomenon. I've never heard anybody say ch champing before. Skip says he liked the issue of Nightclub. And if he felt better, he would come on and talk about it. But he's not feeling too well. So hopefully you feel better, Skip. But uh, thanks for the comment. We're going to move on. To... We're going to go up to the Mech Wars. He says he actually <laughs> likes it. He actually liked it more than us. He didn't have as much uh, of an issue with the pace. So that's cool. Um, I'm uh, glad to I, hear I, that. I'm just, I'm just needing out more. I did. Really, I honestly, I didn't. I don't have any real complaints about it. But uh, Overall, issue was I, good. honestly, I, I did feel like I started reading it. And then like a second yeah. later, I was like, it's over. I was like, wait, what just happened? And that could be because I was having fun with the issue as well. Like you, you, well, it's true. It's, it's you me. really it's notice the, the you really notice an issue is long. If it's like boring to read, you're like, oh, is it over yet? Like, I never felt that way. I was flipping the pages like, oh, 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 oh. And then. Now so. this book, I took my time slower, and not because not because of that reason, for me, for this reason, because it's just so beautiful to look at the art. Yeah, this is this is my pet darling book, um, Samurai Doggy. If you guys aren't he, familiar with this book, I've talked about it since it's come out. Um, Samurai Doggy was a book that I just bought on a sheer whim, no expectations. Didn't think I was going to be buying issue two. I just love samurai. I love dogs. It looked weird. It had a funny name. I was just like, oh, I'm just going to buy the issue number one. I, I quite got it. Like they earned, they earned my purchase just for the concept. And if it totally sucks, who cares? And I just fell in love with the book. Like I read it, ended up reading it again, did a video on it, which caused me to read it again. And I was like, every time I was like, I just love this book. And I just wanted to pour over it. Yeah. Last so issue, fast. He went against. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's just see real quickly. Last, last issue, Doggy went went against Metal Gear. Uh, <laughs> if you ever watch Metal Gear Solid, or or, or watch you play the game at all and stuff, you know, uh, giant robot mech. That's what he went against. I see right now he's standing top of the metal the mech. You know that. Like I said, I read through this. You're like, you're like. I'm like, oh, like, Ash is really into this. So I started reading it, and I was just like, because this is, I read the first two issues a while ago because we, we were recommending books for each other. So oh. I so I went, 
So I read the first issue two three issues come out. I was just like, it's a very happy. Well, the first, well, the first part of the first issue was kind of like, okay, he's you know he he loses, he's separated from his family, and he he, he loses an eye, whatever, and uh, so he's friends trying to find his family. This and then he comes across all this robot, and I'm like, I'm it's like, what year is is it like? Is he even on Earth? And like you know, it's like it's, it's it's one of those things. It's like, has it been that many years where like the animals are pretty much uh evolved or whatever but i was just like there's he's surrounded by all this different stuff he's he's a lone thing it's it's come it's it's almost like in a sense you can say it's kind of like um yusaki yojimbo throwing it thrust thrust into the future Mm -hmm. there's Um, some similarities to that yeah 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 and so the book became like the action this guy is a berserker mode he just just cutting through the robots like they're nothing meets his little kid, and it starts to become like a very happy story. I'm like, oh, lucky. And then, like, last year, she, like, when I, I, I read it, because like, we're going to talk about it, so, cause we're, looking for, we're looking for comic books to review. And I saw, I'll, I'll read the next two issues. Like, I was just like, oh my gosh. I got to the fourth issue. I was just like, oh, uh, uh, what? Uh, and I've been waiting two weeks. I was almost feel like a month for Ash to catch up. He was sick, and then he just kept putting it off. <laughs> so I finally read it like last week. You know, we, we went over it or two weeks ago. And dang, like, that is emotional. Like, you know, this is what happens to the kid. And then this issue is just insane. Because, you know, especially when you learn this whole issue is about him with his brother. And it led up to his brother, basically showing up and fighting against him. And then you just see the whole interaction with them talking to each other. Like you said, like, the, and then the art he said in this is just like, it almost reminds me of the, the color palette is like pretty so. Yeah, I can see shade. that. Yeah, and I, yeah. I like I I just I'm enthralled with the design of this. Like there's such there's like an almost like an urban art style uh, uh feel to yeah. this. Um, yeah, like, 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 like they own their own culture, their own uh, like a uh, urban um yeah. It doesn't the, it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like anything else that that I'm reading. I love the interesting unorthodox layouts that the artist uses, like here where these characters get in the elevator. And they show and you the, the elevator going up. And then the way they yeah. show the elevator through the wall, but but it works to the eye. Like I understand from a visual storytelling, like the purpose here is to communicate to the reader like what's happening. And I can't we can't see movement on a still page, but this worked so well. I was like, wow, this is something I don't think I've ever seen. I don't think I would see a comic book artist like recommend like doing it this way. It feels so experimental and different, but it totally works. Um, and it's little things like that that to me, as a longtime comic fan, once upon a time wannabe artist, the student of the of the art, and just just it makes me giddy. And I love I love the, how do I say, like the underground nature of it all. Like it's not, it's not like the official um, way to do something. This is just all kind of like made up, kind of like, it's almost like the difference between like a formally educated musician who went to like music school and learned all the proper music theory. And then you get those like artists that like, they just pick up an instrument and they like teach themselves and they don't they can't even read sheet music. They don't necessarily even know that they're doing things right, but it just sounds right to them. Yeah. That's it's how it feels. Like this book, this book feels like the latter. This book feels like two guys going, We don't formally know what we're doing. This just feels right. And because of that, it feels unique. So and the piggyback after that, it feels like these guys are heavily inspired by Daft Punk and Cyber <laughs> stuff. <laughs> it's in general and how they do this stuff it's and it's still your typical like your like your dystopian future world you have the uh, you have the bad guy and he's the characters he's the guys who work under him and they're like sorry boss we failed you like hey, that's okay uh you know and i'm and i'm expecting him to kill them for their failures but instead he doesn't it's just like it's just like it's a he's kind of laid back and he's just like you know tell me what happened like you know it's like oh some guy at Wolf and like, what? Really talking about you guys? You're just making any sense, you know? And he's like, so he's kind of like bored. He's, you know, he obviously he's a musician. He's famous. You know, he's got a like, he, you know, tells him, hey, 
I I'll come take care of this mess because you guys are failures. I'll do it by myself because you know it's costing him money. Like it's it's, it's it's like I said, it's a very simplistic story. Yeah. But the difference, the difference is is at this character here is the bro one of the family members, the siblings of the samurai do uh, guy uh, doggy. Uh, Shiba, he calls himself Doggy because he's like Shiba died that day. Uh, and I like the fact that you know, you're your brother versus brother, very samurai. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's like I said the, you get the urban hip hop by the way they clothe the, the dress stuff. It's still cyberpunk, but they still dress like you know, it's like I said, it's kind of like Chappie in that sense. You're gonna have people that you know they're their own street gangs like that stuff. And how the the clothing, even though they're all this futuristic stuff, they still dress like they're shopping in an urban uh, pipe, whatever it's called. You know, uh, yeah. And then, like I said, like he he's like, "Don't worry, like I'll take care of this." And he's like, "You're like what the heck? Here you go. Here get the Metal Gear thing." <laughs> yeah, get set. So all it. all this issue is pretty much takes place as a flashback <laughs> from the last issue. Yeah. And yeah. I like the I like the way the storytelling yeah. jumps around in these books because the last issue, everything that happened, we're like it kind of just felt like boom here it is and it happens and and it needed to be. It's, you it's if you if you told there. these if you told the story where this issue was before the last issue chronologically it would have fit, but it would have taken a lot of the steam out of it, um a lot of that those impactful moments that just hit you like out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And now that yeah. we're like, oh, whoa, and we're like catching our breath, this story comes in and it's like, okay, here's how it all built up to what just happened. And we're like, oh, and, and it just seems to work right. Um, and then we get this drama. Yeah. There's so many influences I, I feel in this book. Like you, you picked the Metal Gear um, from the, the, the robot, but I really feel like when I was reading this, this beginning part felt so John Wick to me. Um, yes. Just the way uh, that they're like going to the boss and stuff, and it's like, who is this wolf guy? And it's like, they don't realize like yet who they're going against, <laughs> you know? Like, well, not even Cyberpunk. We'll make this or, or not, not, not uh, John Wick. Let's Cyberpunk twenty nine with uh, with Johnny in there, you know? uh, Johnny Silver, what it's called. Same thing. You you got the high rise mecha corporate thing, and you got the one guy who's making a mess for this. It's your it's your classic trope. Right, but, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you got the big boss yeah. who feels like yeah, he's untouchable, yeah. Yeah. and he he yeah. doesn't yet realize who he's messed with. They're like, oh, wolf? What what kind of wolf? Like, and when, I, like, that's like how the original John Wick what? felt, where it was like no one realized, like, who they had messed with <laughs> until it was too late. It was car and killed his dog and all. Yeah, uh, and so here, you know, even, even this guy is like, oh, we got this machine and stuff, and he doesn't realize also felt a little bit like um little kill bill reminiscent sure. um i get a little bit of echoes of like samurai doggy is um like uma thurman's character um it, and not only this, she's not only this. he's going to have to trudge <laughs> trudge his way through death through his various brothers i have i just have this feeling and it's and then you pinch yeah. it out like very samurai i'm like yeah Samurai stories are typically it's and, very typical to like have that high tragedy. Like I could totally see a story where it's like, oh, he had like his brothers ended up being his enemies. He started off to save like, them, but then Yeah. So you got two different stories kind of being merged together. You have the, the wandering samurai going around and just just uh making his way through. He, he wants to find his last something is you know, he's gonna kill whoever he needs to to get through. Uh, and then you got the other story, like where there's this guy, you know, where it's just typically like, you know, you have the 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 guy who's in charge of everything, the corrupt leader, you know, big big business guy, and then he's like, you know, most people, it's he's like the kingpin, kill him. He's only one Spider Man. He's only one man. And then if you're if, if, if like if you're a kingpin or find out that Spider Man's is like his brother, <laughs> it's like what the heck? And it, so it's like you got these, like I said, these two stories kind of like colliding and done well, and then. On top of this, we see these like this older couple. Would normally be an older couple, you know, but they're robots. And he's like, you know, he's like, hey, what's going on over there? What the heck? He knows there's two dogs. Well, and one he of them starts is a recording robot. it. Yeah, one of them. I don't know if the other one's supposed to be a bird or something. I can't. Or 
But uh, it looks, it looks like a bird, yes, and, and a robot. And he starts recording it. And I'm thinking, this guy's going to, he's going to get killed? But he says, you know, and you got to think about this. All the people in the, in the lower levels probably don't worship the dogs. They probably are afraid of them because they know who they are, where it gets around. When you live in a corrupt town, you know who the gangsters are. Mm-hmm. So seeing this, and he's going to like, you know, he took a picture of it, click it, and now he's going to do what? I don't know if that's supposed to be, is he going to broadcast it? You know? Mm-hmm. Showing, cause, cause, can anybody stand up to them? You know, so it's like, is this going to start a revolution for the next issue? But even, even a, so even part of the story part, look at the art. You got the re- destroyed uh, mech. You got just the dust just floating everywhere. And then on top of this, you got the brother. He's like, oh, he's just so, just, he's so brainwashed. He's so without remorse. Oh, I killed the kid. Oh, well. You know, hey, you want to you want to join us? Yeah, it's an he's interesting like, statement on like yeah. how 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 much we're a product of how we were raised, right? So you got these two characters, like the same blood runs through their veins, but obviously Samurai Doggy came up different than his brother because of their upbringing. And I love I love the scene here, um, you know, where, where Doggy faces off against his brother. He says, "What if I refuse to surrender?" Oh, dear brother, think about it. I'm quite famous and influential. I can get you what you want. What's your wish? I want to find our mother's assassin and save our siblings. <laughs> what a childish dream. Their 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 outlook on life could not be like more opposite. Um it and, and the Joker brothers. Yeah. <laughs> it's there there I, I there was a little bit of a uh, Batman Joker that I did see. So it's 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 interesting that you that you saw it too. Um. Yeah, and that this guy he's oblivious. It's it's doggy. I don't want to get religious here, but my I am obviously a religious person. The idea of doggy wanting to save his brother, but his brother doesn't want to be saved, is something that's very impactful to me. Um and. I'm very much like on the hook now. Like I'm like I need to know where the story goes. Uh, how how do you deal with that? How do you how do you have the outlook where your only motivation is you love your brothers and you must save them? That is why you live in life. And now your brother doesn't want to be saved, and furthermore, now your becomes your can. enemy. Like yeah. how do you you can't all of a sudden like kill him because that invalidates everything you pretended to be like if you do that it's like well then you really didn't love him and were die hard to save him it's well yeah and not only this if he's like this is the other one all that like this you're like this my purpose that save them and it just you just tears you apart you yeah. find out they're alive uh like i said again he, he's like he's He's like, I don't want to. Uh... Now, there's a thing he's, he's like, you know, because looking for the guy, like, you're like, oh, you mean father? It's like, so they're kind of hinting, like, that, uh, you know, that, yeah. So basically, yeah, yeah. If they meant they mentioned like something about a father, something like they were raised by the guy that killed his their mother. Yeah. And that's yeah, I why think, they're all messed up. I think Doggy is going to have to kill father, and somehow not kill his brothers. Um, that's where like, I, I, I don't know, yeah, but yeah, cause, cause I'm thinking like the guy probably took the dogs, raised them to be killers, mercenaries, whatever, guard dogs, whatever, you know, cause you know, that's what he does. He sells, you know, and he just, they don't, they're, they're, they're so twisted. So bringing up, they don't realize they're being used. There's another cool that, uh, page here that I liked. And this is not a book I will normally tell people like you're gonna buy it because like the great writing. I do like the story, but the writing is a little raw. You can tell that this isn't like a really established writer or whatever. But I do like some of these lines here. What a pity, my brother. Well, sorry. What a pity, my brother or not. This is what happens to those who fight against us. Is that so? If that's Shit the best alive. you can do, <laughs> I advise you to start getting worried. <laughs> it's just, I, I just love Samurai. Like, I just love 
like as Skip would say, tough guy talk. And Samurai Doggy, he's just that quintessential, like Clint Eastwood, man with no name type of character. He's, he's, and he's Batman. <laughs> he's <laughs> <for> Batman. <laughs> Literally. Um, he doesn't do any motion. But Maltese has got some tricks up his sleeve. Um, and we get in a fight, uh, a secondary fight. And um, he's got these weird orbs that uh, Doggy's like trying to shoot. Me. Then a, shoots a missile at him. And there's a pretty cool scene. Doggy dodges to the side and slashes it in half as it passes him. Then it detonates. Then he, like, braces against the the explosion. And the whole time, uh, Maltese, of course, was just expecting that at the end. And the last line of the book is, you have underestimated me, brother. And I'm just like, oh, dude, it's just so badass. Like, I love these, like, type of standoff things. <laughs> Um, again, like that yeah. you would see if you ever watch any of the old Clint Eastwood Man with No Name books. Um, I- I'm just down. This book is tons of fun. It's it's not the best book on the shelf from a objective standpoint, yeah. but I and think its rawness yeah. is part of the charm. That it's not perfectly executed. That it feels very experimental. It feels like two kids who love comics are putting yeah. their every ounce into this story and what they know how to do. Um, and it just, the, other thing, yeah. the love of the book that they have pours out and it's, and it falls onto me. Sorry. That's the last thing I want to say. I was going to say about this, which is serious right now. We're speculating that all his brothers are evil. We don't know. Maybe. Some that's of, true. Maybe. Uh, I have a feeling. He, had a sister, he might have had a sister, or whatever brother who basically said, I don't want, I can't, his life is wrong for me and left. Or we're going to learn that maybe one of them decided to betray them and then they killed their own brother because he was weak. Like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. It's true, we don't know. We yeah. yeah. But I mean, like, I'm looking forward more to this, you know, and yeah, the next one's supposed to come out in May, but uh, as far as I know, it, it's going it, to, there's going to be another one uh, after this, maybe? I'm not sure. Like you said, well, they there's at least that... one more issue because it says to be concluded. Yeah. Now, when I read that, I'm like, to be concluded, not continued, <laughs> concluded. But yeah. this has been solicited for at least seven issues. Yeah. So what I'm hoping is that concluded just means this story arc. And then it's going to keep going. Not that, oh, it's going to be concluded because Aftershock is going under and all the rest of the issues have been canceled. I I think think it's just going to be concluded in the next issue, issue six, and that's it. Hush you. Don't you rain on my parade. I'm not. I'm just being a realist. (laughs) Uh, The rain is real, but I don't want to suffer it right now. We just have mid-hopes, mid-dreams. We'll be easily impressed when they come true. Don't don't uh, try to get your hopes up too high. All right. So, what did you think about the fifth issue of Samurai Doggy? Like I said, the art was really cool. Um, I'm hoping that it doesn't wrap up in the next issue. I hope it actually does continue to go. How did it stack uh, up as far as like all the issues so far? For the one before this is to me so far is the most impactful. Okay. But this one, we're starting to see. I'm sorry, it's, they're starting to ramp up as far as the, the action more. Now we're getting boss levels. <laughs> <laughs> boss levels. This was my second Pretty favorite much. issue of yeah. Samurai Doggy. So, um, which is something. Yeah. Like I, I, I've, I like every issue. I'd say the second issue was probably my least favorite because it felt really just like, wait, what the heck? Like I, it went out of left field. I appreciate it now in hindsight because it was needed for the bigger story, which is what I predicted. But at the time, I was like, I don't know who these characters. Are. What am I reading? But um, yeah, like the previous issues before this, not uh, not I think it was like two and three, were kind of like the same story. It's like because it it does a thing where it where it's super can tell you what happened in this part of it. You know, it's just kind of it's like a recap. Mm-hmm. And I this is kind of I just count it as being one story. Where, yeah, you know this one. And the one, you know, actually the, the one, the, actually the one before it, just stood out, everything, yeah. and I was just like, man. And, and then, like you said, like they got, they got a punch in the testicles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and w- like, without without issues two and three, 
issue four is not nearly the impact that it is. Like you um, needed those. Um, well, yeah, because they, they reinforced the kid. Yeah, you know, he's like he's just starting to like the kid. I was, I was like, you bastards. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, my second favorite issue. Um, I'd say I'd say the first issue is still my favorite, probably because that was what made me fall in love with it. So it's kind of like your first kiss. Um, then this issue, then the issue, just last issue is probably my third favorite. Then issue three, then issue two, if I had to order them. But I like them all. They're super dear to me. Um, I, I hope this book gets all the releases that are due. Like, I don't want it to be cut short. I want the writers to end it on their terms so we get the full story. So I'm crossing my fingers for Aftershock to hold things together. <laughs> keep keep the keep the keep the keep the boat afloat so these books can keep coming out. Um I'm just a big fan. All right. Yeah, and I'm glad that uh, you jumped onto it. Like I was I did not expect it. I was like it's such a good like pleasure to like have someone else pick up we, the book well, and like need, it too. We need a book to talk about. So I was like, you know what? Oh, like don't ruin it. <laughs> uh, man. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. All right. Uh, Speaking of ruining things, let's go on and wrap up this show with uh, looking at the new books. Um, I don't really feel like playing the game tonight. Marania's not here. We only have a couple people lingering. Let's kind of kind of yeah, look at the books. We're going to talk it? about new books tomorrow on your show over at the Geeky Puppets yeah. channel. Um, but we'll just kind of yeah. we'll kind of spotlight yeah, here. Simple. Uh, any interesting books that you may have interest here on the front first page? Moon Knight, I'm uh, guessing. Noctera. Oh, wait, uh, I don't have it up on. I don't have it. Hold on. I thought I had it live for you yeah, there. Straight, Boom. No, there you go. Straight, straight. All right. Oh, bear with me, folks. My Discord just crashed. It's already peace. Like, what's going on? Uh, um, reloading the Discord. Heck, are we still live? Hold on. Yeah, we're still live, but the Discord crashed. So, <laughs> all right, you're 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 back live. Let me get the uh. <laughs> yeah, the the program just completely crashed a desktop. <laughs> oh, let me. <laughs> I was like, wait, why? Why is it? Why did they, the stream thing crash? And I was like, oh, he's gone. I'll be called to call too for myself. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, it looks like Skip joined us. Yeah. He's feeling it's better. Fun. It's a, it's a, it's a miracle. It's a, it's a Easter miracle or Easter... resurrection Sunday miracle. Resurrection <laughs> Sunday miracle. Well, Many miracles happened on that day. Um, indeed. All right, so we got the new books. Uh, well, we got Skip here. Uh, we let me give uh, Skip. Let me give Skip the floor. Uh, for for a minute and say anything he has to say. Uh, I don't have much to say. I've just been uh, enjoying comics when I've been able to read them. Oh, minus the uh, the last co well, yeah, minus that Batman issue that I just read today. Gosh, that was a turd. But other than that, yeah, just been enjoying comics and and yeah. such. Oh. Yeah, like crashing desktops. Says to him. <laughs> <laughs> In three, two. What? Let's go. Nice. Oh, already opened my can. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it on this channel. We count down. This is how it. we do it. Na 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 na. Uh, yep. for me, I'm, okay. So, uh, real quickly, you're asking which ones on here to stand out my eye. Did I, I catch? Caught my eye. Oh, just kind of went to your studio. Thing. Yeah, I'm looking okay. for the chat here. I I got a bunch of. I we can, I can still 
Well, there we still, go. We're still live. We have eight people watching, so. No, I just need Which to be able to read the comments. So I, was... I, I can read them for you. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Let's I'll see. just sit here and let you read them all to me. That'll make a good show. Yeah, it will be a good show. Or get your open your phone up. Watch it on YouTube. Just let me get a second to navigate some windows. Go drink your drink. Shush. Use use your iPad, old man. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay so on the first row here moon knight i'm i'm looking forward to i've been loving love that uh, series it's been one of the better moon knights in all, quite a while um carnage i did not check out but that's the second issue by uh ram v's uh buddy alex pacanetto 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 yeah um I see Miles Morales on the cover, and I'm already like not wanting to read it. <laughs> Wait, you were just championing Miles Morales? Not, not, no, not in comic book form. Oh, not in comics. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know how to do Miles Morales in comic books. Well, maybe uh, Pac Nadell's got good ideas. Maybe, maybe, well, well, maybe, maybe but, uh, Pac Nadell could be the guy to give the but, oomph that Morales needs. So you see this cover here. You know that is right. That's Iron Man in the symbiote. Oh, okay. I kind of see it now. No, Paul, yeah, it took me a second first. I was like, what? Because it's the black and gold armor. And then he has this uh, current to it. Um, we do, uh, for those who don't remember, and they're in the, the, the whole Null story, Iron Man actually had a symbiote armor that bonded with him. Created it uh, so he could I'll help out that one. Uh, so, as far as I know, the whole thing with the with the carnage now is that Cletus Cassidy is back to being carnage again. I thought he was so dead. Bad. He was dead, but now he's alive. Oh, all right. That's what the whole Ramy was crazy bringing him back to life. All right. I don't know. I haven't, I've been reading this book, so no. But um, I, I have to. I have to. <laughs> I have to give little props to Marvel for continuing the story. Even though Round V's gone, not doing their normal like we're rebooting to number one, like that's, putting that's in, a putting a new person and keep it going, like Bravo Marvel. Now we're down to two people watching. <laughs> what okay, eight right. and two. Holy, holy crap! <laughs> uh, but I was teasing Zach on Discord. I said like for top five, finally we'll have a week where we're not going to talk about Ryan North's freaking Fantastic Four. <laughs> that's right we're gonna scroll down here and uh, um we're gonna talk uh, about dr doom on, on, on spawn there do you see that <laughs> yeah i don't know what that's all about i got two books on the uh, second row that i'm picking up uh, eight billion genies number eight, eight that looking forward to that and noctera 13 yeah, still 13 going strong with our boy snot rider Last Superman mm-hmm. Lost, so I read the, I skimmed through the first issue. I might skim through the second. It's a, it's a ten issue thing miniseries. It's Christopher Priest. He's not my favorite writer, but like I said, like on this, I'm kind of interested because like, because it's a it's a different story, and there's not those stupid damn kids in this one, like in actual comics. <laughs> it's, it's, it's 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 the normal plot. It's just Superman and Lois. There's no John in then at all. And it's oh, been like twenty years. Yeah. <laughs> I also want I want to know what's up with the costume. I have no idea. I mean, is there gonna be an action figure from Tom McFarlane? I have no idea. <laughs> like um, I don't know. I will uh, say one positive thing, however, about the book that it that it is not the it is not the least interesting book on this row, nor the second least interesting book. Um, Storm and Captain Marvel are they're they're awesome. You misogynist. <laughs> uh, Radiant Black sucks. <laughs> That's not a cool cover. I know. <laughs> yeah, the covers are always cool. Well, I like this cover. I my friend John's obsessed with Storm. Like he he's like I don't care how bad the book is. I just love the covers. <laughs> He collects them. It's all the covers. Look, man, like... I trashed Radiant Black number one, and I stand by what I trashed. 
well, there's I'm 20, gonna... what, this is issue 23, so there's 22 issues after number one. This it book could have gotten better. Was... And far be it for me to say, it's selling. People are buying the oh, book. They're happy with the Apparently, they're happy with the book. It spawned its own shared universe, which I'm 100% in support of. I hope it grows. I don't have anything against that book. Issue number one was complete garbage. It was painful to read. But but maybe this book is way better. Uh, there's lots oh. of books that I can go back and say issue number one was garbage to read. Um, but was... but I... spawned a massive... I, I, look, Batman number one? Like, way back in the days, like, or sorry, Detective Comics, number one. Hell, even Detective Comics 27. Not good. I, I, Not I didn't good know stuff. that was Kyle Higgins. What else has he been doing? Ordinary Gods? He cuts? He's got a come out? The new I book? Don't so, it's gotta, it's gotta I just want to say on. props to this book, and if you're a fan of this book, obviously it's doing some things right, because it didn't get canceled. Marvel can't get a book to go 23 issues, hardly. So... Props, props to you, Kyle Higgins. Props to you, and I mean that sincerely. He's worked on apparently on. I didn't realize he worked on Batman Eternal, and then did uh, some of the. Did, oh yeah, I want to read that someday. Uh, Secret Origins, he did as uh, Dark Hawk. Winter, yeah, Winter Soldier, two thousand eighteen. What else we got going on here? This next row is not that. I know it's got Breen's uh, favorite co current book right here, Danger Street. For me, I'm getting Guardians. It's uh, Lanzig and, and uh, Kelly. You're not getting Danger Street? This is. I, I told myself, I mean, and I never made a promise all those years ago, so I would never buy a Tom King book. It's a, this is a cool cover, though. I like this cover. I'll, I'll, let, I'll, let, I'll let Skip do it for me. Yeah, and I've been hearing good things about Danger Street. I mean, I'm not going to touch it with the ten foot pole, but yeah, I've been hearing good things about it. Apparently, Skip is not in the comic reading group with his Tom uh, King friend fan anymore because you were uh, you were reading Tom King books regularly, weren't you? Human Target. No, I was just reading Human Target. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were reading. Anyways, this cover. I, I just Tom like this King cover. Books before, like, uh, like I, I have, but. Like, like, I don't actively look for Tom King books to, like, just pick up. But, yeah, we were reading Human Target. But one of the big reasons, like, I was reading that, aside from just, like, having something to read with him, was because of the Greg Smallwood art. Because Greg Smallwood's freaking amazing. Yeah. Um, as far as Tom King goes, I try, I went back and tried to read, like, the his Batman run. And I got two issues in, and I was just completely just bored. I, I could see how you could say that. I didn't think the first. I didn't I, think the first arc was I, boring, but no, I, did, I could. I could see how. What, I could see how people could be turned off by it, though. What turned me off? It's not so the great as Batman Run either. No. At the same, what turned time. me off was the whole Gotham Man and Gotham Girl thing story. I was like, Why did that turn you off? I I have Superman and Supergirl. I don't need Gotham having their own version of that. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, I can't level with you on that one, but I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you want to tell a story with you come in and just have like, you know, like Superman and Supergirl come in and be like Clark's like Yeah, like, but what he does story. with what he does with those characters, they wouldn't have let him do that with with and and the, and the role that they played like in the story and being from the city and everything was integral to like what affected Batman to, you know, start thinking like, Oh, maybe it's not all on me. No. And honestly, too, there was a lot of good things about those characters that don't get enough credit. Uh, the, the other thing that Tom King was able to do is go, well, what if Gotham had their own Batman and super, or sorry, if Gotham had their own Superman and Supergirl, you know, because Metropolis yeah. does Metropolis doesn't need a Batman. Yeah. But Gotham right. doesn't have that, so Gotham needs a Batman. So basically, Tom King said, "We're gonna make our own Superman for Gotham." And what's neat, but the problem is, of course, it's not really Superman. And then there's a, the corruptibility there, and it's uh, there was a lot of stuff there. Plus, I, dude, I, you I, get to see I, Batman ride on top of an airliner and steer it in. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! I, I saw that. That's one of the that. greatest scenes in a Batman comic ever. He landed a plane. Yes, it was rad. 
super rad. Anyways, here's the Guardians of the Galaxy I got up on screen. Uh, this rad. is the third Guardians of the Galaxy series in as many years. Um, the last one, well, the last one after this, I think it was was either Bendis or Al Ewing. Can't remember the last. No, one. last one was Al Ewing. Previous to that was Donny Cates, and previous to that was Bendis. The uh, the the Andy Andy one is like one of my favorite ones. You read that on the channel. Uh, fun story. Um, uh, I'm I'm optimistic. Kelly, bit, yeah, I'm optimistic like for this. I'm not gonna get it because Marvel pushed me away. Um, I'm I'm tired of them rebooting all the time. Like, you heard it, guys. A guy, a guy in a Marvel T-shirt came up the ash, just randomly pushed him. Pushed, yeah, he did. I was like, who are you? He's just he just ran <laughs> off before I could get his name. He you know, but he had a Marvel, but he had a Marvel T-shirt, and so and I blame Marvel. <laughs> is Bob Iger. But if you are not pushed away from Marvel, if you're not like me and you're still willing to give Marvel your money, this was probably going to be one of the better books on the shelf. Like I said, I just I I, I like the the, the Dan Abnett one. Dan Abnett was basically like the the Guardians of the Galaxy MCU personalities. And I'm hoping that these guys continue that kind of personality. That um, seems likely. I like I said, I just hope we only have like a dead person come back and like I don't need you know freaking uh, uh I find this card or crap. I find this interesting. Yeah. Tell me what you notice. Than... Tell me what you notice about this. I want I, I wish it would be Chris Yost, the guy creator. But is this her or the is this the person one that created her as Ethan Van Skyver? Is this really her though, or does, or does she have her own clones? Other than Honey Badger. The clones no, this is this is her. But yeah. but does does something not stand out readily to you? Yeah, she's not called Wolverine. Yes. It's, it's before it's because this is a, a past issue. It takes place in the past before she became Wolverine. Uh-huh. So Instead of calling her Wolverine back then, they're calling her X twenty three like she was. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, because because they couldn't have two Wolverine books. Ash, that would be confusing. You know, when they when they had Wolverine Origins, and it was about the origin of Wolverine way before he was called Wolverine, the book was still called Wolverine because he's Wolverine. Yeah, you should tell Marvel that. Oh, I'm I'm cool with this because she's not Wolverine and she's X twenty three. I find it just very interesting that Marvel's quietly capitulating because fans are like, no, she's not Wolverine. No matter how much you try to throw this in our face, didn't you hear? There's another book called uh, X twenty three with Logan. Oh, that's X ten. <laughs> no, it, no, it's twenty three because it's two thousand twenty three, sir. Oh, it goes by the year. I stand corrected. Sorry about that, editor Bankman. You're lying. You're not even standing. You're sitting down. Is anyone reading Phantom Road? No. Uh, I read the first issue. Interesting concept. Uh, could be a TV series. <laughs> I feel like you say that about every indie book that you like. Well, no, this literally feels like a, a Stephen King thing. Uh, like like Lincoln Lears or, or or anything like that, where you basically these people end up. Like they don't are they in like another world or whatever they're supposed to be you know and they're trying to survive or are they on some acid trip we don't know it's it's this this looks like a bad sci fi movie channel no. yeah man well I'm gonna I'm gonna be buying this because there's a Danny cover I was so just gonna say <laughs> Skip was like whatever to this book and then I pull up the Danny cover and he's like wait wait, wait hold on I gotta buy this it, it, it's it's like it's like in the in the, in the style of Route sixty six. <laughs> mm -hmm. Damn Route 66. it! Lost souls trapped on a highway. I bought a Magic Order book too because freaking Danny did a cover. I was like, oh, gosh. And it, like, Mark. like my guess, this whole thing is they're in purgatory. I don't know. I want to read it because I like Jeff Lemire. I just. Yeah, I have sure. to like. I have to just be. I just yeah. I just do these mini series. It's like I'm just budgeting. Um, 
I'll probably read it or digitally. Just get, just get the trade. Yeah. Yeah. Or oh yeah, or digital. It's, it's, it's like no a month angels. later for two bucks. Yeah. It's no snow. It's no snow angels. I'm gonna say that. Okay. It doesn't but look it like be. it. I mean, it's Gabriel Walter art. As much as I like Gabriel Walter, I kind of feel the way about Gabriel Walter how I feel about Francis and Neil Yu. Like if they're drawing like architecture or vehicles, I'm like thrilled. And then if they have to draw people. Like whole bodies, uh, I like I start to get a little. Oh well, for Gabriel Walter, his whole bodies because he does like this weird thing with anatomy. I don't know. Just it's, yeah. the way he draws bodies and legs is kind of weird. Yeah. And then like Francis Lanell, you it's faces because like every woman's just gonna look. I don't know. Like she's furling her lips and has like the sharpest nose that can like cut through glass. Well, the other the other thing is that in that Phantom Road is that the these creatures that are chasing them. I'm getting like going back to the aliens and what in the planetary, the, the, the angels. Oh yeah, the angel things. Yeah, they do kind of resemble them. That's true. So Tehillim, Planetar- yeah, everything's Tehillim like says right he's getting Moon Knight, Assassin's Apprentice, Batman Adventures, Little Monsters, Nemesis, Nemesis Reloaded, TMNT, Usagi Ojimbo. Seems like all pretty decent picks to me. All plus plus World Tree. I'm not sure what World Tree is. Um, that's the new Tynan book, but it got delayed though. It's not coming out this week. Uh, it's coming out on like the 26th now. But yeah, I'm getting World Tree too. But I'll, I'm I'm just gonna buy two cover A's and let all the speculators, whatever ones are left, like clamor over it, and then I'll sell one of my cover A's. So Little Monsters is a book that I hesitantly took a pass on. Same creative team that did one of my favorite books since I've been back in the comics was the Ascender Descender series. Absolutely love that series. If you get ever to get a chance to read it, highly, highly recommend it. Um, but this book, um, excuse me, this book, I read the first five issues and it's really decompressed. Not, not that it's bad, but when you're spending four bucks an issue and the book has taken forever to go anywhere, I'm like, wait for trade. Unless you're a super fan. Good book. But I'm waiting for the trade. Imagine this movie with a bunch of like six year olds that are vampires. Yeah, it's kids being vampires. It's there's more to it than that, but um, I know <laughs> it's the new Disney Channel. I just say it's not Disney for sure. Um, Nama says, "Man, I'll be talking about that tomorrow, definitely." Uh, and we'll be talking about this on next Monday too. It'll be one of the probably the feature books. We've been covering that on the show. Uh, eat walks definitely because you're not Dash is getting that. <laughs> oh my it's Star goodness. Wars Return of the Jedi Eat Walks number one. Mm-hmm. And and I think it's a, a, just a collection of the original books. I don't think it's the new writers. That'd be crazy if it was. It is, yep, Alyssa Wong. <laughs> How can you make the Star Wars Ewok stories worse? Redo them with <laughs> Alyssa Wong. Maybe she'll improve them. Who knows? Just, no. Just... At, least they got, they got, at least they got Rachel Rosenberg on there coloring. She's good to colors. Here's a just... peach from Local variant. I gotta see that. Is it Kyle Hotz variant? Yeah. Is that Hotz or Hotz? I don't know. I've always heard it Hotz, but it could be Hotz. It's Hotz, Kyle. Um, I just... The bottom uh, left is yeah, the more vocal variant. <laughs> Mild <old> brony. <laughs> that actually looks like normal. How is it Peach Momoko? <laughs> I, I just, I'm just it's, so, I'm just, I'm just sad. Like I'm just Star Wars is my like most beloved fictional franchise yeah. of all time, and just seeing what Marvel and Disney are doing to it, yeah. just, just look so, away, Ash. Just yeah, look away. Just, oh, just, but, 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 it's but you know what? I'm long. telling you this though. I'm, I'm gonna. Oh dang it! Wow, I just thought of this, but I don't want to do it that way. I just thought of another book for the book club. I'm not going to do it that way. What I suggest, though, is 
stop looking at any new Marvel comic that they sell. Don't, don't even click on it. Read Karen Gillan's Vader. Read Vader down. And then just walk away from Marvel Star Wars related comics with a smile on your face and just saying, hey, all right, <laughs> it's not going to get any better than that. At least that's a good note to end on. That's what I would do. Mm-hmm. I do have I do have a few trades that I picked up digitally, like like actually I should say omnibuses like I got that I want to get to. Um, mm-hmm. I just the problem is it's like it's not even necessarily the quality like there can be great quality stuff out there. They just sap my enthusiasm. Like I just I was like I don't even care I don't even get excited anymore like. You could tell me George Lucas is making a new Star Wars movie. I'd be like, uh, I just don't care anymore. Like, I just, it's sad. I don't even, I don't want to go Ritchie's into it. Guy Ritchie's doing a Star Wars movie. <laughs> Guy Ritchie's doing a Star Wars movie. It's, it's oh, going to be like, it's going to be like the bank job. Better than Nemesis. Um, well, most people do. The people are, uh, there are so many people who do not like the boys comic book. I guarantee you they're not going to even read Nemesis. Like it, like despite the fact there's two different people writing it, it's Mark Millar and uh, Eric Ernest does the boys. I could I just couldn't believe online. I was looking on uh, yesterday or two days ago. People are saying like, "Oh, I love the show, but the comic oh, book is just crap. It's so good. it's like uh, some. I, I guarantee these people they didn't read all the way through. They didn't you know didn't even read the Dear Becky like we did. Now everybody's entitled to their opinion though. But I mean like I guarantee those so people will be like. If they made a show based on Nemesis, they'd love it. But they hate the books. It's so weird. Who um, hates the books? I haven't heard anyone that hates the books. Oh, it was all over Twitter, man. Really? I saw it. it, it like, just tons of people were just like, just, it's Garth Ennis, and he's just doing it like he hates capes. Like, there, there was no really argument. I mean, like, I understand. Some people just don't like the, the crude humor. Mm-hmm. Or the you know as far as stuff you know it's like it's like and like these these people also just didn't read they won't they won't read all the way through you know mm. but no I mean I can like say I, said, I can understand you know like Skip has no, vocalized sure. opinions but, like that before and it's like that's fair to be like I don't I don't enjoy this type if, of content if, if you but couldn't get into to the say like I hate it, it like what. Well, that's that's the thing. These people are saying, "Oh, the, the the comics are just you know him just doing his torture porn, whatever." And it's just like, there obviously these are people who never read it. Yeah. They, or they or they saw one issue and like you know, and they think that's what it is. It all it is. It's just like it's like yeah, Huey and Annie are better in the comics than they are on the show. So I was looking at yeah. this, and I noticed that Frank Quietly has a um, variant cover. Yeah, for yeah. issue number um, two, and I was like, "Wow, wouldn't it be really cool if Frank Quietly had a variant for every issue, and it was done in this I style?" He does. To, like, I was like, "Cause I like that uniformity. This kind of makes me feel like the first, and like each issue had one of the different characters, but unfortunately, the next issue doesn't have one." So, I just want connecting covers. Well, you don't get them. Too bad. I want a poster. Too bad. I will say Travis Tress art way different than it used to be. <laughs> wow, this style has changed. Um, oh, have you noticed in My Hero Academia when they're on the be right there? Not Chroma. Who cares about Chroma? All against they all. They <laughs> said it. You heard it from RDV first. Best book of the week. I didn't only, say that. That only Ash is reading. <laughs> <laughs> you soggy yo jumbo with the turtles. Best book of the week. This this chroma book is, has been fantastic so far. Why is he um, wearing a wig? He's not wearing a wig. He's got a red wig on. Or a turban. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it does kind of look like he's wearing a red wig. Um, <laughs> like he's got like a red fro. Um, um, my name's my name's Bernice. This book, I can't explain it. I this book is uh, fun. 
I I've really enjoyed the first three issues. This is the last issue apparently, so I'm bummed. Um, but they're giant issues. Like each issue is like three comics. So essentially, this is kind of like a twelve issue series when you yeah. get all yeah. down to it. But um, yeah, and I I don't know why I picked this up. It's one of those cases where I just randomly picked up a book. Um. Well, not be totally first, randomly, but yeah. I am my first Usagi Ojibo book. I am, I am looking forward to this. It's on my poll, and uh, I have, I've, n- I've never yeah. been a big fan of the crossovers. All the previous Usagi Turtles crossovers have been, they've been okay, but they never like. They always felt like a little bit lesser than what they were individually. Like I it's feel like the crossover right. the crossovers never like were additive. Like they were just a little subtractive. It's like, yeah, you get them in the same book, but so I'm very cautiously hopeful here that like we're gonna get something great. This um, is the the original creator, right? Stan Sakai. Stan Sakai is the creator of Usagi. He's not yeah, the creator so, of okay. Of the no, 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 no. But I mean, like, you actually are getting the guy who got doing Usagi. Uh, yes. By his, his first time. So, and Turtles. it looks like, it looks like this is going to be the first time that, at least from Stan Sakai, that he's using the actual Turtles. Because one of the previous ones where the Turtles was a crossover, they were sort of like an alternate universe Turtles. They were. It was more of like, what if the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles existed in Sam or Sagi's time? So they were. They were basically it was like four Ninja Turtles that used the web. Like you know, what I'm saying like they had. They were like reimagined for the story. They weren't the actual like, hey, we're from New York and we got we're turtles from a pet store and we well, got hit with this m- well, mutant ooze. Like these it wasn't guys that. Actually are- yeah, so this they yeah. actually are from New York, and they yes. come to a portal. Yeah, so this will it'd be interesting to see how Stan uh, does this. Um, I'm so getting it. I bet you this book's gonna go up in price. I I don't I don't even think about that anymore. But um, I I now have to decide which cover to get. <laughs> Part of me wants this cover because. Uh, Kevin Eastman drawing Usagi. Uh, pretty I cool. Want that. I like the original cover too. I like the A cover as well. But I always get to see Stan Sakai draw Usagi. Um, I don't think Stan draws the turtles as well. I There's just something about the way Eastman draws the turtles. <laughs> I just, this to me is like my childhood. Um, except for the stupid rainbow yeah. colors. I hate that. Oh, I hate that, Kevin. Yeah, like they each have their different color bandanas. I hate that. That rainbow, though. It's, yeah, it's a rainbow. It's so, just, you know what I'm saying? It's, <laughs> oh, well, that's because Jenica's not here, thankfully. <laughs> Doesn't she have another blue? Is how stupid it is. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but I like. Oh, yeah, the Peterson 150. That's yeah, cool. Like Dan Mora, why aren't you on this? It'd be kind of cool. One thing I like is when other artists draw Usagi, and they don't try to copy Stan Sakai's. They draw the him. They draw him their own way. For some reason, I really like that. Like, like this is what Usagi would look like if this artist had created him, because he draws Skip, rabbits you, different. Skip, do you have a favorite cover so far? For the Usagi no Jimbo Turtles book? Yeah. Mm, I don't know. There's quite a few good ones. I don't know which one would be my favorite though. I kind of like uh, I kind of like cover A, honestly. The last one he had up there with the sun it's kind of cool and it looked like if in uh it looked like if samuel jackson was uh usagi ochoa where they draw his face oh. <laughs> there you go there you go they're all the same color now 
There you go. No more yeah. rainbow turtles, okay? <laughs> Too bad it's a one in a hundred incentive. <laughs> it's all it's okay. Skip it, hook you up, you'll find it. <laughs> yeah, I might get this one, man. I'm surprised that Kevin Easton draws them in color. I thought he would just draw them in black and white. Serious. He does draw them in black and white. And then Hi-Fi comes in and does the colors. But I mean, like, you know, he would just draw them in black and white. <laughs> but it was, it was with only having the red bandanas. Yeah, no, that's the way. Like, they used to be with the red bandanas. This is the TV yeah. versions with the color bandanas. Yeah, the better version. Whatever. <laughs> don't don't that's push my why, buttons. That's why, they, that's why they changed it. Because nobody wanted the other one. <laughs> uh, yeah, another James Bond. No, they that, they changed it because they thought millennials were stupid and they couldn't tell them apart without colors. Well, the millennials bought the books and watched the show. Mm -hmm, it was Gen X about the books. Uh, scroll down there, sir. Yeah, I do have one down there. 007. See that? They come out with another James Bond one. We're king and country. Bill Kennedy Johnson. New story. All right. Yep. Hopefully it's good. Red... Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it's, it's James good. James Bond is a fugitive. Yeah. Yep. Um... Uh... Uh, Born a Blood, picking that up too. That's our, our buddy Dylan doing that. Uh, yeah, not much, really much else. It's a really small week. Not for me. I've got seven books. That's a huge week for Ash. Look at this. I got uh, Guardians Galaxy. Moon Knight, Batman Adventures Online, Ambassadors, 007, Noctera, Nemesis. Yeah, but Turtle. you always have got like a dozen books. I'm just saying, it's a, sm it's a small amount of books for me. My, my weeks don't really look like this. This is my last <laughs> week. That's this week. This is next week. <laughs> 10 books. 11, almost 11 books for me, man. Here's the week after. I, I... Here's the week after that. <laughs> oh man alright kids Skip and I are both sick Vankman is high on something um, hopefully you're reading good comics um, I'm high on good comics high on good comics very nice yep. um, we'll be on uh, the wanna, Geeky Puppet wanna... Show tomorrow at what is it 8pm central 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Mountain time can suck it. Yeah, I don't know who's in the mountains. Why are you living in mountains? I'm just kidding. I you used to live in the mountains. Time. It was fun. Mountain time. Mountain time and the living's easy. Yes, yes. Yeah, Zach is on vacation. Uh, he should be back by Thursday. He didn't even say goodbye tonight, man. He was in the chat and then just took off. Yeah, if he was drinking tequila, he probably didn't even know he was leaving. Uh, he said he had one shot of tequila and a couple shots of rum. I was, yeah, I was... but it's, it's he's, he's a lightweight, though. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> he, probably, he probably passed out. And then threw apparently. <laughs> it is pretty late over there in Alabama, so he probably yeah, went yeah. to go tip some cows. I don't know what you do in Alabama. Uh, your, 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 your siblings? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's getting late. Thanks to special uh, thanks to Skip for jumping on late this evening. Um, yeah, and um, uh, we'll have to catch up on eight billion genies. Yeah, yeah, because Nemesis is gonna be done. I think I think we'll do eight billion genies either next week. Yeah, hey, Bob, uh, well, this is the last issue. Yeah, but I mean, but I mean, the other one's ending already. I think it's the last issue. Nemesis is the last issue, too. So maybe that was, we'll do that next week. Yep, it's the last issue. We'll do 8 billion genies and uh, Nemesis. 
Oh, they're already soliciting the deluxe edition hardcover. I know, I saw that. <laughs> See, that's why I've been waiting. <laughs> How much are they wanting for this thing, though? 40, 40 bucks? bucks? But, we know, in stock trades, it's going to be like 42% off. It's true. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to see how it ends it's been an enjoyable ride so far we'll see if he can let's stick the landing well who knows if it's ending it might just get a second run very but... possible Charles Soule doesn't have many successes so I could see him going back to the well I got. I gotta finish we're getting hell to pay I missed an issue uh oh like, well you've also yeah, missed 8 billion genies so I mean, Julie, like I said, I was enjoying it. I read like the first four or five, whatever. I was enjoying it. Uh, I, like I said, I'm looking forward to reading the rest of it. Because I want to know how does this end, especially with the kid and all that stuff, getting superpowers. I want to know, yeah. like, what's what's the end game here? You know? Well, I think it's around issue four, maybe five, where they. Did you get to the part where they explain, like, why that the genies are there? Yes. Okay. So I want to know. I want to know what's the end game as far as after that. As far as like we got the guy who basically wished to be the best at everything, you know. Mm. Uh, so and then you get the kid who want to be a superhero, and then they're and then just realizing you know, at a certain point they're gonna lose all their powers, and I, uh, yeah, it's just like it's just crazy. Oh, my Discord crashed again. Well, you know what time it is then. <laughs> it really is time to end the show. But I hate to not give anyone a chance to say goodbye. So uh, I'm going to restart it. And we should be back. One good thing is it remembers the state we were in. There we are. We're back. You guys are on the air. Um, go ahead and say goodnight. Say your final goodbyes. And I'm going to go ahead and close this for good. Final goodbyes. Your final uh, goodbyes. I'd like to thank the Academy. I'd like to thank everyone else. Uh, thank you for jumping on, Skip. And thank you, everybody, who's popping up here. And we had five people watching. You guys are insane. It's only 1.45, 2.45 in the morning, a.m. on the East Coast. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 8 p.m. Central. Talks good comics. And uh, maybe Ash will actually have five books. I got seven. Yeah. Maybe you'll actually be able to narrow it down to five for me. I'll try. <laughs> All right, guys. Take it easy.